Uh, welcome folks to the August 17th meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. We are recording this uh, for ACMI. Uh, <clears throat> we're holding this meeting via Zoom. Still continuing with Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, General Law Chapter 38, Section 20. Uh, we'll accept public comments during the public comment period per our usual rules and regulations. Uh, our guidelines allow for three minutes. Uh, we'll be timing those this evening. I do expect a lot of comment. I want to make sure that everyone has a chance to be heard this evening. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure we have all of our board members here and present this evening. So I will call your names and if you could just indicate that you're here, quick yay. Uh, we appreciate it. So Gene Benson. Present. David Watson. Present. Ken Lau. Here. And uh, Rachel Zimberry. Present. Great. Thank you all for being here. And from town, we have Jenny Rate. Here. Jenny, is, are you the only one from staff on? I don't see anyone else. Oh, Aaron. and Aaron Zorko. I'm here yeah. too. Sorry. Sorry, Aaron. You're way down the list. All right. Um, I'll move in to continued public hearing for docket 3602, 1207, 1211, Mass Ave. Uh, so I will uh, see Mary O'Connor and Jim Doherty are here. So I will give the floor to Mary. Um, Mary, go ahead, walk us through what is new and uh, what's transpired since the last sure. hearing. Before I, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, before I begin, I wanna thank all of you. It's been over a year and you put a lot of work into this. I wanna thank Jenny and the people in her office as well. Um, you've received several submissions since the last meeting in, on July 6th. Uh, which included two letters from me dated August 10th and August 12th, which I would suggest and I confirmed with Ms. Rate addressed all of the issues that were raised by the board and by Ms. Rate's office. You also received an email from me dated August 13th in response to the issues raised by the commissions again for Mary, your connection froze up for a minute. And it appears to still be frozen. Mary, try stopping your video. I don't know. Jim, would would you want to jump in if Mary's unable to join us? I think if Mary goes out and then comes back in, I think that might be what she's doing. It might work. Yeah, it looks like she's gone entirely for the time being. Um, Mr. Chairman? Is it Jim? It is. Thank you, Mr. Go Chairman. Go ahead, Jim. I, I just spoke to Mary. She realizes she got knocked off, and so therefore she said she is going to dial in. Okay. So we, we should expect a momentarily. All right. We'll... Oh. Yeah, with me. This is her calling back. Okay. Thanks, Jim. She had, uh, she just called me back and she needed the dial-in number, which I just provided her. So hopefully she'll be with us in a moment. 
All right, we'll give her another minute. If uh, if she's not able to get on in the next two or three minutes, we'll um, come back around to that, take care of some administrative items. Yep, and if you want, I can attempt to give you an update to keep it going to Mary Steps back. In the interim, perhaps the board could uh, introduce themselves to the, those who, of us who don't normally attend. All right. Um. Jim's raising his hand. Jim is? Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Did you want to chime in? Go ahead, Jim. You're the applicant. You can speak. I, I apologize. I, I apologize, and I'm sure on behalf of Mary, I apologize. That was her. For some reason, she's having technology difficulty because she got cut off on the phone. I've just given her the phone number again. She got it completely this time, so hopefully we should hear from her. Um, to, to you, Mr. Chair, I fully understand if you want to try to keep the ball moving in whatever manner you see fit is fine. If you want me to give you a brief update, I will. Um, I will not wade into Mary's memorandums. I think she should speak to those or feel free to move the, full, the meeting forward any way you, you feel uh, fit. All right, uh, I don't think, because this is a public meeting, a public uh, hearing rather, I'm not sure we have enough of, uh, you know, much of a choice here since this is a published legally advertised hearing. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just put a pause, we'll wait for Mary to come back on. Uh, I think Gordon Jamison made a good point. Uh, I am, We'll ask all the board members to introduce themselves one more time uh, for the people in the cheap seats. Uh, I'm Andrew Bunnell, and uh, we'll just go down the list. Gene, do you want to say hello? I'm Eugene Benson. Thank you. Uh, Ken? Uh, my name's Ken Lau. And David? I'm David Watson. <laughs> and Rachel? And Rachel Zemberry. Thank you. <clears throat> full roster of the ARB members. Unfortunately, uh, public meetings, public hearings being what they are, we don't have much of a choice, like I said, but to put pause on this for the time being. Uh, hopefully Mary figures out her technological issue quickly. Uh, if she's unable to, we'll broach that if need be. I uh, appreciate everyone's patience. Not the uh, Ideal. Hey, Andrew, can we just do some of the minutes or um, or anything else that we have administratively? Uh, yeah, I was thinking we could do the meeting minutes in uh, a couple minutes here. Um, why don't we move on to that, actually? So we'll table. Docket 3602 uh, for the time being until the applicant attorney can get back online. Uh, we can't begin the next public hearing until 730 at the earliest. So yes, I will move on to uh, meeting minutes. So let's uh, scroll down to where we are on that. I apologize. I have uh, 700 pages here of
Okay. Uh, we'll go through the meeting minutes for Monday, July 6th. Um, if any board members here have comments on those. Gene, go ahead. Um, first page, third line from the bottom where it says, Mr. Benson, the economic viability, there's a verb missing. I actually don't remember saying that at all, so I'm not sure what the verb should be there. Um, and if it said said, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not sure what that sentence should be. So I'd suggest just striking that sentence. Okay. And um, then on page three, in the very last paragraph, the first sentence should read, Mr. Benson would like the traffic study to include a right turn and no left turn only option. So the word no has to be inserted before the word left. And um, then in the second sentence, that is not what I said. Um, and what I said was that uh, the board could alter the setback requirements on Clark Street, but not the setbacks. So that last sentence needs to be amended to make that change. It would just be a way to kind of still do what I'm doing, but like, right, like, that's what you want. Like, if you're, uh, if you're not participating in the meeting, please put yourself on mute so that we don't have any background noise uh, oh. or private conversations on. So those so. are the only changes I have on the minutes. Okay, any other board members have changes on those? And I, I would move we um, adopt the minutes of July 6, 2020 with the changes so indicated. Second. All right. All in favor? Gene? Yes. David? Yes. Kim? Yes. And Rachel? Yes. All right. I vote yes. That's that. Thank you all. All right. Uh, Jim, are you there? Jim Doherty. Yes, I'm here, Mr. Jim. Is Mary on the is Mary on the line now? I see we have somebody who's dialed in. Uh, someone's dialed in. It's showing someone is dialed in. I don't recognize the phone number though. Oh, actually. Okay. Hello. Hello. Whoever's dialed in is muted. I asked them to unmute. Um, they can also do it themselves, but it sounds like that might not be Mary. No. Okay. If if we need if, if that is Mary's cell phone number. I'm sorry. That is Mary's cell phone number. Oh, thank you, Ken. Could you just, uh, Ken, could you just introduce yourself since you're chiming in on the record? Sorry, Ken, Ken Ingber. I'm Mary, Mary's law partner. Thank you. Mary, if that is you, I think if you dial star nine, you can unmute yourself. I'm not able to do it right now. They, that person has their hand raised. Can you unmute them? Jenny? I tried. I, I've, I did ask to unmute, um, but I'm, I'm not able to get them to come in to, uh, to unmute themselves. So you, you've, you told her how to do it, star yeah. nine. Um, Ken, can you assist her or Jim? 
I'm sending her an email as we speak. I'll try calling her home phone. It might, Andrew, are you sure it's star nine? It might be star six. I'm not sure. I think you're right, star six. Try star six. Mary, try star six. Jim, she could go on email on her phone and click the Zoom and it will take her right to us without her computer. That's a good suggestion. I appreciate it. I'm gonna send that to her. Yeah, because that's how I had to do it a week ago. <laughs> My computer died. Thank you. Okay. I'm talking to Mary now. She's going to try star six. No. Jim, mm -mm. is she going to try the phone email? Uh, her, her internet died. She's going to try a couple of other things. She's still working on it right now. Yeah, she won't need internet for the for the phone. She can just it's a call, I think. But, well, go, goes over the air. You're correct. Right. Yep. So that shouldn't be an issue. It's probably under me. I said that. Okay. Hello. Again, if you're not if you're not a participant, if you're not either a board member or the applicant or his representative, please mute your line. Andrew, I am here under Car uh, Carolyn Simmons's email. Okay. Okay. Thanks, right. Mary. Uh, Sorry about that. All right, so I don't know what open. happened. It happens. Uh, I right. apologize. Um, uh, technology is wonderful. All right, we uh, hang on for one, just one second, sure. Mary. So we'll reopen docket number 3602, 1207, 1211, Mass Ave, continue public hearing. Go ahead, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm a little out of breath. I ran up the street. <laughs> so um, I, as I said, um, I have provided you with a lengthy letter dated August 10th and August 12th, as well as an email dated August 13th. I think where I got cut off 
is I was talking about the bonus FAR and the public access space. Those plans remain unchanged. It's 675 square feet of public access space. The issue for Mr. Doherty, and I think some of the neighbors, is the um, duration of the use of the public access space and the amount of times per week. If it's the position of the board that this is space that is to be used uh, from dawn until dusk every day of the week, Mr. Doherty is not interested in um, the additional bonus FAR. There are a number of reasons as to why I put them in the letter. If that is the case, and I think the board does have the ability to, um, to, to limit the, uh, the use of the public access space, and he would want it limited to the 40 year mixed use restriction. Uh, if the board is unwilling to do that, then he will forego the additional bonus space and you have in your revised plan set, uh, I think it's plan 7.871, which takes out the additional bonus space. There are consequences, financial consequences, as with respect to that, uh, to the town, including the loss of real estate taxes and the loss of hotel tax. The step back is no longer an issue on Clark Street. It's seven and a half feet in from Clark. It's seven and a half in, feet in from Mass Ave. The Clark Street setback, as the board well knows from its decision uh, regarding 882 Mass Ave, as well as other decisions, the board has the ability, provided it uh, provide, finds conditions unique to the proposal to alter the step back. You have that authority. And I would suggest to you that I have given you in the letter on behalf of Mr. Doherty a number of reasons as to why you have that ability. Uh, now, going to 5.3.8a, I want to draw a distinction. I've spoken with the building inspector and I've spoken with Ms. Rate. It is the, uh, when it's a corner lot, the step back shall be the same as the required front yard depths for the adjoining lot, not the adjoining district, the adjoining lot. The adjoining lot here is, has a 7.9 front yard setback. Uh, now, we, you've also asked for a number of things such as uh, the truck turning radius, the trees that are there, the trees that'll be removed, proposed plantings, landscape and open space calculations, elevations, delivery protocols, traffic impact data, and revised plans. They've all been provided to you. Now, you may recall at your last meeting, that the planning department was going to do its own shadow study. The results of that shadow study confirm the results that Lincoln Architect came to by way of its shadow study. By a letter dated August 12th, I responded to tax memorandum. Um, I will not go to get into it in detail, except I will point out a few things. The site civil engineer is on the line, Rick Salvo, and the architect, Greg McIntosh, are also on the line. The site civil engineer can confirm, and we have provided you with a plan that so shows that you can tandem park 10 additional cars. So you have 24 spaces in the garage and 10 additional uh, spaces for 34 total. That is a significant amount given your ability to reduce the parking to 12% of that which is required under the bylaw. Uh, the other point that I wanna make is this use is a use that calls for staggered people checking in and checking out. You have people checking in and checking out at off hours. This isn't during peak traffic hours that this would occur. Now, TAC mentions the issue of where are the restaurateurs, the patrons coming to the restaurant going to park? Well, I would suggest to you that when town meeting passed the mixed use bylaw and gave the redevelopment board the ability to reduce parking, that the Town meeting recognized that these people are gonna park on our streets. We don't have garages in town, so that isn't an option. And you, the board recognized this fact when they granted the special permit for 1314 Mass Ave, the prospective pub in the old Bailage 5 and 10, and 1386 Massachusetts Avenue, the recreational marijuana shop. Uh, now, in order to find to reject this special permit because of traffic congestion or pedestrian safety, you have to look at the language of the bylaw. It says that the requested use will not create 
undo traffic con uh, congestion. It doesn't say that it won't cause some traffic congestion, but I would say to you that the traffic reports that we provided, including the supplemental reports, indicate that there will not be traffic congestion, but there is no objective evidence to establish that there will be undue traffic congestion. But on the issue of pedestrian safety, it says that it must unduly impair pedestrian safety. That means that it has to impair pedestrian safety to an unwarranted degree. I would suggest to you that the objective evidence establishes that neither of those can be established. Now, uh, with respect to uh, the Commission Against Disabilities Memorandum, it is totally inappropriate at this stage of the proceedings uh, to send this, uh, to postpone this hearing and send it to the Commission. We don't even have detailed plans. 90% plans don't come to later on in this uh, proceeding. In any event, it is the building inspector's determination that, uh, that is what rules here. It is his determination as to whether it complies with um, the architectural access barrier regulations. So that, um, that is, I would suggest, a red herring. Um, the other issues uh, that I would suggest as well is that the commission is just plain wrong. When I looked at um, the uh, AAB regulations, and this is an exclusively valet lot, you do not need handicapped spaces in a valet lot. Um, and I would suggest to you that it would be unprecedented for you to postpone this vote and send it to the commission. That isn't within the scope of what this board does. It would, in fact, I would su suggest you be an abuse of authority. The other thing that you must look at is that this project, I would suggest to you, comports with the findings of the master plan that this board uh, commissioned. Um, the master plan uh, calls for mixed use development as Arlington along Mass Ave, Arlington's primary commercial corridor. It also finds that increased density through greater building height and massing would benefit Mass Ave, and Arlington's growth management priorities must be Massachusetts Avenue. Here you have a developer during unprecedented times prepared to spend multi millions of dollars to build in Arlington and to build something that I would suggest to you is needed. Um, I've talked somewhat in my letters about uh, the trade, the hotel trade from Lexington. Don't we want to tap in to that trade for the businesses in Arlington? Uh, you have the ability, um, count, uh, Attorney Heim has given you a detailed memo. Um, you have the flexibility and the EDR process is intended to encourage and ensure creativity, innovation and orderly expansion of the tax base. You, it must be reasonable and I would suggest to you, you need to be equitable and fair and in keeping with other decisions that this board has made. If you have specific questions for the site civil or the architect, they're prepared to answer any of the questions that you do have. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. I turn it to the board for questions. Uh, we'll start with Rachel. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, I just want to start by thanking the uh, Mr. Doherty and um, Ms. O'Connor and the entire, uh, the entire team for working so closely with the board and in response to all of the public comments through the period that we've been reviewing this. Um, you have been very responsive and I think that the project has gone a long way to addressing a lot of the, the items that, that we've all brought forth. So, so thank you very much. Um, I um, also appreciated the items that you brought forth in your response letter to the traffic, uh, traffic advisory group as well. Um, I, I agree that adding a, um, a sidewalk on the right side of the, the, the pull-in circle is something that I, I would um, ask that you include. So I, I appreciate that you agree with that. Um, I also, agree with your assessment in terms of the um, the intersections that are nearby that the commission had um, requested that we perhaps ask you to contribute towards I, I don't I think that is an existing issue that 
I, I would not put onus on, on this group to address. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you with regard to, um, with regard to the, the specifications of the, the finishes of the, of the building. Um, I didn't see, you, you listed the finishes themselves, but I, I didn't see any actual um, color at, or um, final specifications to be able to accurately review those. And I, the three rendering types of renderings all show different slightly different coloration. So I, I can't weigh in on that, but that's certainly something that we could review um, at a later date um, and ensure that those, those are approved separately. But I, I would like those to, to be reviewed. Um, Jenny, I'm not sure if that package is something that you have received that you'd be able to share with the board. I do have those materials at my office. Okay. And I can make an arrangement for anybody to see it, or it could be um, typically that is something that would be in the sort of general condition type one, where we would have all final specifications materials um, for approval by the board. Fantastic. Um, um, but, I, but I do have them in my office. The applicant provided them. Uh, that, was, that was a while back. Great. Um, I also agree that the ADA concerns that have been brought up uh, specifically for the interior of the building are not under the jurisdiction of this board and are not something that we should weigh in on. Those are um, under the jurisdiction of the building department. So I agree with that assessment. Um, I have a couple other comments, but I will hold those um, until my other colleagues have Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Ken, call on you next. Well, I also like to thank um, thank you guys for working with us and understanding our questions. Um, I appreciate uh, the inclusion of the elevations and sections to this uh, layer submittal. It, it it gives us a better understanding of how this sits within the neighborhood now. Um, let me go over a few things. Um, I, I do agree with uh, what with, with Rachel said. The handicapped um, units and and such is not in our, pre our preview, and the building inspector will take care of that at, at the building permit process. Um, I do have one small concern. It, it has to do with at the corner where you have a planter. I don't know, Jenny, can you get to that um, a site plan? where it shows the handicap um, ramps from the curb, curb cuts. If you zoom up to the this corner. One? Is you, this the right one? Uh, anyone's fine. If you zoom up to the corner of uh, Clark and uh, Mass Ave, can you get really, up, really close into that? Further down, no, toward Mass Ave. One minute. Perfect, right there. See that planting bed right there? I'm just wondering if you would be able to chamfer that planting bed uh, such that it gives a little more uh, space for the ramp, to, uh, for the turning of that ramp. Um, there's a telephone pole there right now at that corner. And I just think it's gonna be a little too crowded for the ramp, the, the point of the, uh, of the planting bed uh, and to get an, uh, get a comfortable um, space for someone to be able to get by in a wheelchair. Uh, can I have the architect address that and uh, see what he thinks about that suggestion? That's Greg McIntosh. He is on the, Greg McIntosh is on the line. I am on the line. It just took me a while to unmute. I'm okay. Sorry folks. Um, Kim, I don't really have a problem with what you're suggesting. Uh, it's a deviation that, I mean, it's a minor adjustment that could be made. I would only ask that it get placed into the conditions. And yeah, it's, it's not, not a... I forgot to vote tonight, but what you're saying from a technical standpoint, I think makes, you know, quite a bit of sense. Okay. Um, 
Uh, I also, um, I'm glad you guys uh, were in agreement with the shadow study. The, the, uh, the, I guess the biggest question I have right now is, uh, and this, this, this will pertain to, uh, to Jim, you submitted an alternate uh, with a roof garden and a uh, unit set back on the, on the top floor. Can you go into that a little bit more? Is that something you're willing to, uh, uh, to do? Or is, what, is, what was that submitted for? Am I unmuted? Yes. Um, thanks, Ken, and thank you for your comments. And it was a pleasure to get all your input through this process, and particularly Rachel as well, and, and Jenny and, and Aaron. Um, be dead honest with you, the bottom line is this. Um, we've spent a tremendous amount of money. We've, we've made a tremendous amount um, of changes to this project, um, many of which we think are attributable to the board members and the staff and have made this a, a better project. <clears throat> the end of the day um, um, comes down to economics. I have personally, um, you know, uh, concerns about it not being the 50 units. It's not, not an ultimatum. I didn't raise this and I don't want to respond that way, but I'm just being dead honest. I think all of you, um, I think everyone, quite frankly, whether you like me or agree with me or disagree or don't like me, will realize that I try to be upfront and honest and not hurt people's feelings. The only way, uh, what we did was very simple. That brought us back to what we're entitled to um, net of the 10% for, for the bonus area. So if the bonus area goes, um, we don't wanna get into changing the whole site. We think the site as it sits is the only way you're gonna do something like this there and therefore we only took that additional space and we just put it on the fourth floor and said, what can we do up there with that amount of space? And, and basically, um, it, the best thing you're going to do is come out of there with a couple of very large um, suite type units. So that's the only reason we provided it. Ken, um, I think you know I've gone to all the hearings, as, as many as possible for all of these projects with the intent of understanding the desires of the board and watch mixed use evolve. Um, and I watched what the, the hearing um, on Lachlan and I saw how that, that project um, was able with a little compromise at the end. So I didn't want um, to provide nothing, but I certainly that is not something that I would uh, easily gravitate to. Um, but if that's the way, and I think that's why Mary started off the meeting by bringing up um, that bonus space. If the bonus space goes, then we would be looking at something like that, which I don't think is, is unsightly or anything. I think it has more to do with um, um, the real ability to, to do what the bylaw intended, to, to give open space, true open space that can be used. But I don't want to take up the hearing. I know we, we started late and I apologize for that. So to answer your question, that's how I feel about that. All right, okay. would, would you be able, would you be willing to maybe compromise a little bit? And right now you only show two large units up there, right? What you had there before was eight or six large units. Eight. Mm -hmm. Eight. So what if we um, maybe cut down two units and have a roof garden out that corner there? I, I kind of like that roof garden up there. It, it gives it a little, uh, gives it a, a space for whoever's staying at the hotel to go up there and sit and have coffee and, uh, and experience, this, experience something there as opposed to sitting down the street. It just gives another option, you know? And I think it, uh, the massing of the building looks a little nicer that way too. Um, I don't know what we think, Rachel, but I, I kind of like that a little better. But I understand the economics, and I, I don't want to push it back where the economics don't work anymore. But you know, I was wondering, is there enough leadway where you may be able to say, okay, we may step back two units and put enough of a roof garden on the edge there that gives you something like that? Um, uh, so are you, are you talking, again, staying within the statutory uh, by right FAR? Or are you referring to some element of bonus area? Uh, I would. I'm. I'm. I am. I'm not contention. I have no issues with the bonus area. Okay, just to let you know right now, and I'm okay with the uh, the um, with the bonus area as is. I just want 
see if you would mind stepping back a little bit and just maybe give up two units on, on the upper floor to have a roof gone up there to give it a little more of a setback so that um, also gives a space up top where people can enjoy. I, 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 um, I guess I would say this. Um, in the, the, in, so right now under the 50 unit plan, the plan that in, includes the bonus area, in that uh, front right hand corner of, of that um, um, fourth floor area, we have an area, I believe it's probably somewhere around 20 by 20, uh, maybe 15 by 20, somewhere in that range that would do something on a much smaller scale for um, people down in the rooms to be able to go up and utilize some type of deck area up there. Um, to your point, um, I would be willing to compromise, but I'll be honest with you, um, it it I, we'd really have to get into, you know, peel that onion back a little, um, because keeping in mind that, um, I mean, I'm giving up three, essentially, uh, the site that I'm buying is 4,600 square feet. I'm giving up uh, just in terms of kind of the easement space, um, almost 700 square feet of 4,600 square feet that I'm, I'm purchasing. Um, so they ha you know that's the only reason I'm looking for that. But can um, certainly I think our intentions through this process have been to try to listen to you people, work with you people. Um, and um, it would definitely be something we would consider. I guess what we, you know, if we, if we, if if the bonus area gets shot down, um, I'm certainly open to that and seeing how that would come out, you know, based on what you and colleague, you and your colleagues want, want to kind of ultimately come up with. But um, I think it would, you know, um, be good to be able to come out of this meeting tonight with the vote before I could really commit with to to doing much much more so maybe that would happen if, if I could if I could jump in Ken the the issue is with respect to the bonus area uh, for mr. Doherty is uh, not so much the 675 square feet as the duration and the hours of use the restrictions so that's where the concern is um, and that's why he gave you that alternative plan. If the board is not willing to um, look at this, if the board's position is the bone, the uh, public access easement is forever, other than just the 40 years, and is from dawn until dusk, seven days a week, Mr. Doherty is not interested in the bonus, uh, in the um, public access area, in the bonus FAR. Is that correct, Jim? That's a correct statement. That, it's a correct statement. Yes, I understand that, Mary, and I okay. and uh, and yeah. I'm and, and I and I'm in agreement with, with Jim. I'm okay with uh, with what he's um, as far as he's making a requestment of not having it from dawn to dusk. Mm -hmm. No one wants no one wants that in the, in in, the, in their property or the neighbors. I don't think that's what what is yeah. uh, something that's wanted. Okay, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm just I'm, I don't and I'm just trying to decouple that a little bit, saying let's say. Uh, I never had an issue with that, but let's go with if we if we can take that open space up on the roof, which is on if you're on Mass Ave on the right hand side, and push it over to the left hand side, and maybe cut down, uh, you know, a couple of units. Now you got now you got a bigger open space up there, like a, roof, a real nice roof garden that 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 could be uh, could be really used. And I'm not asking you to reduce your units that much where it's not profitable anymore. That's what I was, that was my question, just to say, what is the break mark, you know, I, uh, the break point where, you know, I want to encourage pro, uh, development like this, but I don't want to say, put onuses on where he can't, but I think it's nice if we can do that. And that's my question. So, so I think uh, I heard exactly what you said, and I agree with Mary, and I guess what I'm saying to you is, um, if 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 the wisdom or the desire of the board is to um, not um, if we can't come to an agreement on the terms we proposed for the bonus area, therefore um, leading to the approval of 
the proposal that we've spent almost a year on, um, then I guess the next phase, similar to last week, is, or, or, or um, whenever it was, a couple of weeks ago, relating to Mass Ave, then the discussion moved to an alternative plan. And at that point, Ken, I'd be more than happy to have the conversation, but I have to tell you going in, um, realistically, I would probably, to Mary's point, um, rather just, just full tent, to be blunt about it, uh, on bonus discussion, and let's just move right on to what I'm entitled with for 1.5. Um, and I will deal with that, and I'll have to deal with the realities of, of the new normal, um, because I know under the old normal, it was a 50 minimum, um, you know, criteria that really got people's interest to do something like this. Um, there's a lot of, lot of upside in this um, for everyone, the town, um, the residents, the net value to the, to the town, and there was an interest. So we get to that point, I would have it, um, but I think you could respect the fact that I don't want to sit here and trade off um, anything right now um, that we spent a lot of time and a lot of aggravation and tremendous amount of money um, putting this together. And not to, not to underestimate the time that you people have put in and other people have put into this. So um, I'm not ruling it out. Uh, you, you always have been through this process and I've watched you in other meetings well before I even contemplated this and I'm, I'm not being disingenuous. You personally have always impressed me as a guy that came up with the idea. And that's not to slight any other member of your board or anybody in that department. But so I appreciate your thinking outside the box. And, and I guess a little later, I hope not to, with all due respect, be having that discussion. But if we have to, um, there's probably you, this entire board is one that I would uh, embrace having it with at least anyhow. All right. Thanks, Jim. I don't, I don't want to get tied down into to this back and forth. So, Kim, is your question satisfied? Can we move on from here? Yes, please. Okay. Anything else from your end? I can come back. Uh, I'll, I'll let the board also um, um, say what they want to say, too. Okay. I'll go to Gene next. Thank you. Yes, and uh, thank you for all the work that you've done on this. I also appreciate all the comments we got from the public along the way. I think they were very helpful also. I have a few questions and I'm gonna come back to the public open space because I had some questions about the public open space, but let me get to my other questions first. Where is the parking going to be for the staff of the hotel and restaurant? We, we gave you letters um, several meetings ago for the spaces that uh, we Mr. Doherty contracted with it's 11 total spaces and so that's still going to happen yes okay thank you um, the um, what is the length I couldn't quite find that in the material you provided what's the length of the truck that would be able to get in and out of the rear parking area without causing any problem in getting in and out. I defer that to the architect, Mr. McIntosh. Who defers it to the civil engineer, <laughs> Mr. Rick oh, okay. Salvo? <laughs> I, I, I expected that was coming my way. Yeah, for the Rick with Engineering Alliance, um, that truck's 38 feet. How did you come up with that amount? It, it's a standard ash tow truck that comes right out of the um, the uh, auto turn software uh, for analyzing various churning movements of different types of vehicles. And is it is it not likely that anything longer than that will ever be going back there? <coughs> that dumpster is going to probably get going to get um, serviced by either front loading or rail loaded standard trash truck. You know, and and I I don't foresee it ever needing. I mean, that dumpster is not going to be a very big dumpster. I don't see it ever needing a vehicle bigger than that. Okay, thanks. Um, we talked a while ago about LEED certification and your initial submission didn't have much. What level of LEED are you up to and would commit to for the building at this point? 
Greg, I, I, we did file the lead documents. Greg, could you answer that? We have engineered the building to this point to meet all the requirements of the Massachusetts State Building Code and the International Energy Conservation Code. Um, that is a very high standard and um, that is the standard that we're setting it to at this point. Well, our regulations, the bylaws, I mean, talk about LEED. So I'm just wondering what LEED level you're intending to meet with the building. Go ahead, Jim. The um, LEED level, as I think you, have, you, you heard in your last meeting as well, I think um, came in at silver. Okay. And these things are flexible um, because as they pointed out, and as I think we all know, until you get remotely close to 90 degree, 90% 90 plans, um, none, of, none of this stuff's realistic. The majority of all these issues, that's where everything gets hashed out and, and finalized in that respect. So I would say, just as they alluded to last week, the last, at the last hearing on 882, and I think your comment was, um, I appreciate that, and I would encourage you to try to get more. And I don't uh, forget, Gene, what you said back in last July, and I think your comment was similar. And uh, I think any, any prudent person today from a financial, um, a uh, PR, or any other aspect, um, is going to try to do all of that and do it to, um, you know, the, the, the best ability that's economically feasible. And that's what we're committing to as well. And keep in mind, Arlington um, has always been on the leading edge of that in terms of the stretch code. And as I believe you probably know and support it, uh, we have the advanced stretch code and we certainly have to live by that in Arlington as well. So uh, we hear you on that, and I think ours is going to be very similar to the other comments that you got from 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 other applicants. Okay, thank you. I I, I should have said I basically agree with what uh, Rachel and Kin said about the TAC report and um, the other things that they mentioned. Um, I have a question about the sidewalk. This is what I don't understand. If I'm at the street now. I can just walk on that sidewalk, but in the material you submitted this time, you mentioned that if you were to rebuild the sidewalk on the east side of the building, it would need some steps, and there aren't any steps there now. So can you explain to me what's going to happen to the sidewalk that requires steps, and can you show me on one of the drawings how somebody in a wheelchair or using a walker would walk up and down Mass Ave um, past the building. I think I'm, Rick Salvo. Yep, I can take that. Do I have the ability to share my screen or? Do you want me to put up the grading plan again? I, if, you could, would be, if you could, it would be great. Thank okay. you. Is that good? Yeah, if you, if you could sort of slide it to the left a little bit would be great. <coughs> there we go. So the sidewalk, I, I guess just for a point of clarification, are you talking, referring to the public sidewalk or the sidewalk that services the establishment on the private property? Um, the public sidewalk. So the public sidewalk will remain as is, no steps, 2% cross slope, and will meet the grades that it, that it currently exists at. So where, where, where do the steps happen then? So if you look, if you were on sort of the left-hand side of the plan and you were coming onto the site where it says proposed cement concrete walk as, it, as you rotate along the, um, the, the curved driveway, you see where that is? Oh, she's moving away. <coughs> Back up the front, if you were coming up Massachusetts Avenue 
and you are accessing the site, you would access it up that sidewalk where it says proposed cement concrete walk. That's an ADA accessible um, sidewalk. There was a request to put a sidewalk also on the opposite side of the driveway heading back down to the sidewalk on Arlington Street. If there is a sidewalk established there, that would not be handicapped accessible. That would have to have steps in it because Massachusetts Avenue basically slopes, slopes down as you head from left to right. So it would be too steep to be an ADA access, accessible sidewalk. At what point would it not be ADA accessible? I'm having a hard time understanding. I'm not talking about the public sidewalk. The public oh, sidewalk will always be ADA accessible. From the front door along the curved driveway down to the public sidewalk on the right-hand side, if we added in a sidewalk there, that's the one that would not be ADA accessible. Okay. So but you would so, always have ADA access with the sidewalk that we have designed on the left-hand side. So someone on a wheelchair or a walker getting from Clark Street and heading down toward Arlington Center, passing the building, how would they, how would they go? Will you have curb cuts um, at the four places where they would need curb cuts to be able to roll down the sidewalk? No, they would roll straight down the sidewalk just as they do today. That sidewalk's ab about 11 feet wide. Um, the, there would be a small apron right at the curtain. There you go. Uh -huh. if you look at that detail there. There's a small apron mm -hmm. to get up to the sidewalk grade. Um, you know, in municipal situ in, in, excuse me, in urban situations, this is the ideal design for driveways rather than having dips at all the driveways where if you're in a wheelchair, you're constantly going up and down. We are ramping up to the sidewalk. So we will maintain the integrity of the profile of the sidewalk so someone in a wheelchair would just go straight down the sidewalk just like they do today. Okay, that's fine. That I now understand that makes perfect sense. The drawings, some of the other drawings don't show that. So I appreciate understanding that. So um, let me move on to the public space. I, I guess I don't understand. Well, let me start with what hours and days of use would you find acceptable if dawn to dusk, seven days a week is not acceptable. I'll turn that to Mr. Doherty. You're, you're muted. I, I apologize, Jean. Um, so um, if I can digress back to your prior question to Rick, which he handled very nicely. The only reason, Gene, on that public sidewalk, we showed the four pad site, the four pads on there, was that was something TAC had requested. So we showed those. But if you were to drive by the sunrise up Arlington Heights tonight, you know, next next time you're in the area, you will see how it's smooth. And to his point, that's how you want it. Um, in, in terms of this, I don't have, and I apologize, that particular package in front of me, so I'm gonna let Mary respond. But what we specifically didn't want to do, Gene, is we didn't want to create specific times or specific days. And I believe our proposal says at a minimum two days a week and the times will be arranged. And I, we may have put on like maybe eight to six or on the weekend, eight to seven or vice versa, because there's a hotel upstairs. And if you come in for business and you have a big meeting tomorrow, um, obviously, you're not going to, you know, want, want, you know, a lot of um, outside noise potentially. So, so that's what we, we put in for ours. And I won't get in, I'll, I'll let you discuss it, but you saw the other things that we suggested that would help facilitate using whatever time periods it would be used for, to use it in a very professional, meaningful, and hopefully desirable way that, that people will want to use all of those time potential time slots. So who would be managing the site? Would the hotel, would the restaurant, would the town? How would that work in your concept? Well, see, so in my concept, right, is, and again, I'm not being critical of the bylaw. Uh, we're trying to utilize it, okay? Um, but, you know, everything's not codified, if you will. So essentially, I looked at it and I said, okay, 210 square feet, I get 2,100 square feet. Such a great deal, right? And it, and it is. 
Okay, it, it, it's a it's a it's a good um, concept. Someone people had thought through. So then I thought about 210 square feet. We started drawing it off, and I'm like, I called Mr. McIntosh, and I said, Greg, this is insane. I said it's almost insulting to put something a, a 10 by 20 area. Think about it. You know, where are people going to sit? This is pre-COVID. Um, you know that I'm we're talking this way. So I said to myself, look at how much area once Mr. Salvo got involved and started doing the grading and, and, and you know, pulling together some of the information in the last couple of meetings. And I looked at the area and I said, we're going to have it over there. Why bother? Let's give them 675. Let's potentially put a deal, you know, a, a true deal together here where we, the restaurant or hotel is going to provide the utilities, whether that's a speaker hookup, whether it's, um, you know, electric to, so somebody can, can have, some type of uh, screen show to go along with their presentation, all, all kinds of things like that, the lighting under those overhangs out front. So I started thinking about it more and more. We have an area in the basement, which is for utilities and storage as well. I said, well, geez, what are they, to your point, what are they gonna do? Send the rec department up with chairs twice a week, set them up, where's the town gonna get money to set it up? I mean, let's face it, this is a win for everybody involved and it has to be. You're an attorney. You don't need to tell me. The best deal is when everybody walks away, you know, like they left a little something there. Well, these people here, you know, they should be able to store the chairs in the basement. Maybe maybe a podium if, if you know, the town's going to have a little podium they'd like to put up there or something like that. You have personnel on site there. They can wheel it around for the couple of days a week. They take it and they put it back. I'm not committing to them purchasing it, but I think all of these things – ultimately you're going to be incorporated into your decision and it's not going to be an option for them. It's, it's like, listen, this is part of the deal. And, you know, I, I think as everybody knows today, most businesses look to, to do things in a creative way. I see it as a real opportunity. I don't think giving out a bunch of bottled water is probably with their hotel name on it or something like that is going to break the bank for them. Um, I think potentially a restaurant who's going to lay out some hors d'oeuvres. Not, not again. I don't want everybody on the on the video thinking that everybody's coming there for 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 a light dinner. But I'm just thinking that's my vision of what would take place, and I would not be opposed to um, reducing a good amount of those points as Mary's done a great job at in the the agreement we put together. Um, particularly about the storage, particularly about the utilities. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I envision. So if it's two days a week, a few hours on each of those days, who's going to be using the space the rest of the time? It, it would go with the facility. Mary, can you, can you jump in and just correct sure. those? Hours? Cause it, it, it's more than what I think I'm, I'm. Yeah. I, I, nobody would necessarily be using it, Gene, perhaps. Um, people waiting to go into the restaurant, you know, if there was a wait, uh, there would be some seating out there, but um, no one would be particularly using it for any presentations or shows or anything like that. To your question of who would be scheduling, I think what you meant is who would be responsible for scheduling the times and who would use it. It would, only, it would not be political, it would be cultural type things or presentations. Um, I don't know what the board has done. If they've um, had this situation occur yet and would it be the ARB that would people would have to schedule it with or would it be the town manager's office I suppose that can all be ironed out Mary do you have do you have that in front of you readily a handy with the hours or do you recall the hours and the days no we just um, suggested two days a week uh, with defined hours we can discuss you know what the what the board if we can come to an agreement on it I, I think, Gene, my, well, I'll just say this. Um, my intention, and I think as Mary's alluding to, um, my language was something to the effect at a minimum of two days a week during, we'll just call it 8 a.m. in the morning to one night, you know, either, it was either weeknights or weekend nights, and I forget which were which. They, it was till like seven and six, maybe. So it wasn't a few hours, it was a clear window um, where there could be a length of period if they wanted to have something earlier in the day or later in the day. And I agree with Mary. 
um, in terms of her comments with one, one exception is I don't really see people um, spending much time there from the restaurant because we have the patio on the other side for them. Okay. But I certainly, to your point, Mary, there's no doubt about it, those front doors of that hotel would be open um, in non-use time so that you know guests of the hotel um, could step out on the patio if they so desired as well. But it would not be a smoking designated area or um, anything like that that would, you know, uh, quite frankly, I, I, I would say that it, they shouldn't even smoke when the town um, sanctioned groups can go there personally, but that's a personal opinion. Well, I'll let see if any of my colleagues on the board want to talk about this issue because I'm not quite sure how to make this work. David, go ahead, Gene. Yes, go right ahead, David. So I, I understand um, you don't want completely uncontrolled access to the public use space, and that's entirely reasonable. Um, I think, though, if it's public use, then, you know, it's open to the public. If someone just wants to sit there uh, and not do anything disruptive, just be there at whatever time it is, that should be okay. Um, I think in terms of having anything organized that might be disruptive or, or noisy or, or anything uh, that involves... Uh, a group or, or a bunch of people, that should definitely be scheduled. And uh, I don't know who should handle that. Um, you know, I think it should be handled by, by the town. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think, I feel like there's a compromise there because uh, if there's gonna be any, any event type activity, it would have to be scheduled, but otherwise, it's just basically a seating area. I, I don't disagree with that, Jim. Do you disagree with that? I disagree with it. And David, um, you know, from our perspective, uh, we're very happy to, um, you know, um, take responsibility for the things that I had mentioned earlier in response to Gene, and certainly uh, more than happy to have it stated as a condition. So if you will, and hopefully we never have to take it out of out of out of uh, uh, the abstract. Um, you know that's the stick. If if for some reason it's not abided by, I would think it would default the special permit as any other violation would as well. Um, and I would hope that 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 is something that, as well as any other one, would never come up anyhow. But I agree with you, and I agree with Mary. I think there is a compromise to be found there for sure. David, did you have anything else? Oh, I didn't. If, if Gene had anything else, uh, no, no, I didn't I'll, want to interrupt I'll, him. I'll pass on to David. Okay. Well, let me let me see. I don't want to repeat anything my colleagues have said, and I, I do agree with their comments. Uh, I had um, a couple of questions, and and maybe uh, maybe there are things the civil engineer could talk about. But uh, I wanted to talk about the slopes and the, uh, the slopes of the um, curved driveway um, and understand that a little better. And I also wanted to understand whether there are uh, any sightline issues um, for vehicles exiting the driveway uh, onto Clark Street. Hey, can we? Can we put the site plan um, back up? The same one from before, the grading plan? <laughs> yeah, same one would be great. Okay. Take that one first. <coughs> so if you could zoom out all the way. <coughs> Excuse me. So relative to, I'm going to take the last question first, uh, and that was relative to sight lines. And, and I think that this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, the fact that we have 
um, an 11 foot sidewalk um, along this property and then a building whose first floor is set back um, 23.8 almost 24 feet um, the the building really doesn't interfere whatsoever um, with the sight lines of anyone on either end of this driveway pulling into our other site nor the nor the Clark Street driveway. Um, you can imagine a vehicle is all the way out at the curb line and you can I think the the picture is worth a thousand words here. The building doesn't get in the way anywhere whatsoever for sight lines for vehicles coming uh, up Clark Street or anywhere on Mass Ave. So are like those just, go ahead. yeah uh, on the Clark Street driveway are uh, on either side of it are those uh, retaining walls? Clark Street driveway. So yeah. on the on the right hand side, if you're turning off of Clark Street into the site, there's a retaining wall there. So we can get let's get into the grading. Can we go to the next plan that was in the set after this one? It would be no, it'd be the C three plan, not the C two plan. Sorry. You're gonna to have to be a little more specific. This is the way the applicant, I think the application materials are in uh, parts. There's section one, two, and three. Is this in the last section? It, no, it'd be the second one. Second one. C drawing in this set somewhere. Sorry, it's it just takes time. It's a big oh, document. Gotcha. Okay, just Sorry. patience. <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> I feel the same way. There aren't any seat drawings in here. Jenny? Yes. When you um, were looking at a whole list of documents mm -hmm. to click on, yep. it, it was the sixth one down, I noticed from the top. I think the final uh, one more right there, I think that's a C2, I believe. No, that, that's all right. I'm looking for C3. Oh, I apologize. No. Hey, Jenny, I think it's 10 sheets in from the beginning of their submittal. It's way in the beginning, 10 sheets back. I don't, I'm not in the PDF version of the, uh, the document. I think that's what you're talking about. Um, I, so I don't know where this, uh, where oh, this oh, is. Oh, keep on going. Okay. Next draw. All right. We're one, one more drawing down and you're there. Oop. There we go. That's the Coming. one. There we go. All right. Perfect. If you could zoom in, let's take the Clark street driveway first. If you could zoom in on the Clark street driveway.
This is the Clark Street driveway, that yes? The, that is the Clark Street driveway. Okay, all right. Or do you want me to stay nope, here? Or? You're, yeah, you're perfect. Okay. Exactly where you are. That's great. So along, along Clark Street, you could see there's a retaining wall along the right-hand side if you were to pull in from Clark Street. <clears throat> um, that, re that retaining wall, at, right, at the, um, right at the property line where elevation 94 and the top of that wall is elevation 99. It's about a five foot high wall. Um, vehicle pulling out would be on the other side of that sidewalk. There's about eight feet there. So there's plenty of room to be able to get to see past that wall and see clearly see the Clark Street Mass Ave intersection um, as well as north um, down Clark Street. So that, that if, if you scroll down to the bottom of the sheet, what I did was I cut um, a section along that profile, along, along the center line of that driveway. Oh, keep on coming down to the bottom. There you go. And over to the left a little bit. So, so the dashed line that you see is the current existing grade. The bold line that you see is, is, the, um, is the proposed driveway grade. We've got a 9% grade, as you can see at the top of that, at the top of that grade where the property line is, we've got another eight feet of sidewalk there, which is plenty of room for a car to pull up beyond that, um, beyond that, um, property line and beyond the wall to be able to see north and south up and down Clark Street. The 9% the grade um, is a very reasonable grade. This is a one-to-one -one drawing. If you were to pull this drawing out and, and superimpose that slope onto the ground, that's the exact slope that you're gonna see um, is gonna be constructed for that driveway. Put it in perspective for you, um, a wheelchair ramp is an 8.33% grade. So someone in a wheelchair can push themselves up an 8.3% grade. Um, a 9.9% a 9 grade is a very easy grade for an automobile to, um, to traverse. If we, are there any questions, any more questions? Does that answer your question about the Clark Street driveway? Okay. David, so, yeah, so sorry, if, I was muted. No, no problem. So if we move on to the uh, Mass Ave driveway, <coughs> you can see we've got about a 3.8% grade. So, so we're leaving a grade that's about 99 and a half um, in the street um, on Mass Ave. And we're raising up in grade to 100.34 over 3.8%. On the downhill side of that, because Mass Ave, as you go from west to east, <coughs> is going down in grade, you can see it. It's at the utility pole on the left-hand side, it's 99.53. If you look at the utility pole on the right-hand side of the driveway, we're in 95.94, so we're about four feet lower. That's the driveway, that's the side of the driveway that, that does get a little bit steeper on the interior. Um, only because it has to meet the back edge of sidewalk because across the sidewalk, we can't have a steep grade. We have to maintain our 2% grade. Um, and actually we're, we're proposing 1.5%. So when it gets reconstructed, we'll definitely be within the 2% that's required by ADA. So that slope exists for a very short distance until we hit the back of sidewalk and then it flattens right out to, um, to 2%. Um, so in, in any case, when the sidewalk interact, when the driveway interacts with the sidewalk at the bottom, we've got an 11 foot area that's 1.5%. <coughs> so it'll be essentially flat. And again, anyone that knows that's pull it up, pulled out under this section of Mass Ave, there's, you know, sight distance, at least in this stretch, is not an issue. Okay. <laughs> Can I ask a question about uh, Clark Street driveway, David, if you don't mind? Sure. So one of the comments that the public made was that um, the cars exiting the park, the Clark Street driveway would not be able to see pedestrians walking down the street. They would be able to see cars on Clark Street, but not pedestrians. Can you address that? 
Yeah, it's, it, it can, I, I apologize. Is, can we easily get back to that drawing? So let's, st let's stay down here. And you, you can see um, where, <coughs> excuse me, where that 9% grade is. Anywhere along that 9% grade, it's, it's not a significant of enough drop that it would obscure a person. Um, heck, it wouldn't even obscure an object that would be six to eight inches high. Rick, we're talking um, about the Clark Street driveway, not this. Yes. Oh, okay. No, I understand that, but you're, your concern is if the reason why I was looking down below is I was looking at the profile, but uh -huh. if, you, if you scroll up like you're doing, that's fine. Maybe I can explain it easier. The concern is a vehicle that's down in the driveway. That's, and if you look at, if you're on the exit side of the driveway, you're at, ex, you're at elevation 92, for instance, um, if you're about three quarters of the way out of the driveway, the sidewalk right up there is 93.29. It's, th there's plenty of visibility there. Not an issue. Somebody on a... You, you could see an object six inches high off the ground there, let alone um, a, um, person um, or a bike or a pedestrian. Well, that's it. If it's somebody on a scooter or, you know, rollerblades on the sidewalk, will they be seen? Yes, if somebody's, Until they get, if somebody's cat is walking by, it will be seen. If, before they get to the driveway when Long they're... before they get to the driveway. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's thank you. And it's not a very steep slope at all. Okay. That was it. Thank you, David. Thank you, Rick. Can I, can I interrupt one quick second while you still on, on this on the subject? On the on the public <laughs> sidewalk, you have these tactile uh, detectors uh, that goes perpendicular to the sidewalk. Why are they there? I don't get it. It, it was a, it was a, we were responding to a comment. Typically, we do not put detectable warning panels at driveways, usually they're at streets. I think it was a, it was a comment and maybe okay. uh, Mary can remind was, me who made the comment, but there it was, was from the transport, Transportation Advisory Committee. Yeah, and you know, I mean, like I said, we typically don't put them at these types of driveways. I don't have a problem with it because you know, to as many um, indicators as you can give to a handicapped person going by there that there's an intersection here. I don't think it hurts. And that's why I didn't have a problem doing it. But we typically don't put them in these types of scenarios. But typically, when you have those tactile uh, warning strips, it tells you that there's a change in grade coming. There's no change in grade. You're, you're, the, the grade is just continuing with its slope. There's no it dramatic... Does. It, there it, is no change of grade. You're right, because we've designed these sidewalks to all ramp up. But it also it does more than that, though. It tells you that tells somebody that there's an intersection coming as well as a potential change of grade. Typically, the tactile warning strips. If you think about it, if you are on the sidewalk heading down the ramp, you're already heading down the ramp before you hit the the detectable warning panel. The detectable warning panel tells you that there's an intersection. You're on a, it tells you you're on the street. Yeah. So when I see that. And I, and I feel that, that means I'm on the street. Like I said, we responded to a comment. I, 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 it's, okay. If the board doesn't want them, I'm happy to remove them. It doesn't matter either way to us. I'm not a traffic guy. I'm just going by experience. Yep, I'm with you. I understand why they included them, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it hurts. Yeah. So, um, I, the other, the only other, I wanted to talk about one traffic issue and and then a parking issue. And uh, the traffic issue, uh, I, I appreciate um, the efforts you all have made to address uh, the comments from the TAC. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I strongly uh, disagree with the response uh, regarding uh, bicyclists and pedestrian safety in, at the Appleton intersection. Um, and uh, perhaps the, the quote that attorney O'Connor uh, put in her response was taken out of context, but uh, I, I actually think that uh, the safety issues at that intersection are almost entirely about bicyclists and pedestrian safety. 
which intersection was it you were referring to? The, App the Appleton intersection in, in the traffic study. Jim, I, I, did think you wanna... it, I think David, um, the, re the transportation, our transportation expert pointed out that TAC and the town are addressing that intersection. So that's already, but, okay. So the, I don't know what they expect my client to do. He didn't create the problem, he's not <coughs> exacerbating the problem. And I'm, I'm not expecting him to do anything, but I, I think that that comment was entirely off base. David, and uh, yeah. Could I just chime in? I, I think I know the comment you're referring to. It had to do with, um, there's been all kinds of uh, suggestions uh, in the media and other places and at this meeting by, by uh, non-board members about what may have contributed to it. And I want to be upfront right here, right now, to let people know two things, how I feel about bicyclists and um, people with disabilities. You're looking at a guy who freshman year of college, his son calls him and decides to tell him that he's driving a bicycle 6,000 miles across country to raise money for children, well, all people with disabilities and visit with them every other night. And I went to see him off in San Francisco and I met him other places along the route. My wife, myself, we were petrified. Um, and unfortunately, someone on a different route got seriously hit by an 18 wheeler in Texas and didn't make the ride and almost lost his life. So I will um, agree with you 100% that that could be taken out of context. I can assure you, Mrs. Win when Stanley meant nothing by it, I certainly did, and I would apologize to you and anyone else who took it out of context. So I will tell you, I uh, have firsthand experience with a kid who went across country and raised a lot of money along with his organization for that. But I appreciate your comments. and There are no negative dispersions. We hope, quite frankly, that people from the bike path, as well as people passing by that route, um, will potentially become clients of, of the restaurant and hopefully the hotel as well. So please accept uh, my apologies for any, any, any unanticipated um, or implied um, reaction to that. Thank, thank you, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll move on. Um, with respect to the parking, since we are looking at a, a parking reduction um, and uh, even uh, with the uh, valet control of the parking lot. Um, I know one of the concerns of the neighborhood is uh, if, say, the valet lot is full, um, where, where will hotel guests who show up at that point with cars park? And I'm wondering whether there's a way that we can address uh, that issue uh, in terms of of a condition that we could put on so that uh, guests would not be uh, coming to the property with cars in excess of the parking capacity. If I can chime in here, I think I think one condition that I'd like to see, <clears throat> and this isn't something that is to be hammered out tonight, but is part of our will be part of any approval that we gave, is that the uh, the applicant submits a plan for exactly that contingency, and it's approved by the department before. Uh, issues of, of final occupancy permits, et cetera. Yeah, um, yeah. So that I mean, I care of. that makes sense. I I have no uh, I have no issue with the restaurant parking uh, because we're we're handling that the way we we do with many other restaurants along Mass Ave. But uh, with the hotel property, with such limited parking and concern from the neighbors about uh, about hotel guests, perhaps. Um, Avoiding the valet parking and parking in the neighborhood, I, I'd like yeah, to that's, find that's, a way again, to address that's, that. That's a requirement that will be issued. Yeah. Um, that will be a that will be a condition uh, of any special permit that's issued. And the exact plan will be worked out by the applicant department. We've done things like that in the past. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I did very much appreciate you dealing with the upper story step back issue and. Uh, and uh, I, that's a, a non-issue at this point, I think. Um, and uh, I hadn't heard uh, Kin's suggestion before he made it tonight about 
uh, perhaps uh, creating uh, a rooftop garden, uh, a smaller rooftop garden. And I, I kind of like that idea, both because I like the idea of adding more green space uh, to the property, but um, I also like it because it would slightly reduce the massing of the building, which of course is, is another concern that we've heard from, from the neighbors. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks, David. Um, we are running very late. I want to turn this over to the members of the public. Uh, I have some things to say, but they're more appropriate for after that. Um, I share the concerns and the <clears throat> thanks of some of my colleagues here, um, but unless any of the other four members of the board or Jenny have anything additional to say, I'm going to open it up for uh, public comment. Go ahead, Jenny. I just wanted to say that um, I, I have been drafting so that it's easier whenever we get to this point. I have a draft of general and special conditions for us to look at together um, to make to guide that portion of the conversation again whenever we get there. A little bit easier, which included a lot of the things that we've just talked about. Um, so I hope that that's useful at some point when you're ready. Okay. Andrew, can I add one more thing? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, I noticed, uh, I drive through that area all the time. I noticed the last two to three weeks, maybe more, there's a new uh, study going on on Appleton and Mass Ave, where they've placed uh, cones along the divider the strip there. So if you're heading on Mass Ave, heading out to, out to Lexington, there's no left-hand turn. There's actually a... Um, a sign says no entry in there uh, heading up Appleton and every night there's a police car there uh, making sure that happens. So I think the town is trying to address that intersection right now. Uh, I don't know what they're doing but I, I, I like what they're doing. It's it, that that really makes it uh, the, the flow a lot a um, lot better. I think they just got to make that uh, traffic signal light work but that's a separate matter. I just want to bring it up saying that that's being addressed by the town. And if I, if I could just add to what David and Kin said about the top floor, I like Kin's idea too, for the reasons he stated and the reasons David stated. But in addition, um, it would help them get at least closer to meeting the FAR and the gross floor area requirements because even with the 10%, they're off a little bit. And I don't know if if doing what Ken suggested would get them there, but it would get them close at least. Okay. All right, so we'll move into public comment. Again, we're gonna keep this to uh, three minutes. I'm sure there are a lot of people that want to be heard this evening. Jenny, I will call people by name as they raise their hand. Please use the Zoom app to raise your hand. I don't always see everyone that has a hand up, uh, especially with Jenny sharing their screen. I'll do my best. Uh, to do that, and then Jenny, you'll have to let people know uh, or unmute people. I don't have the usual control that I have over the screen this evening. Uh, but we'll begin with Anne LaRoyer. Anne, go ahead. You can unmute yourself and begin. Who's supposed to speak? Hello, this is Anne. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, go ahead, Anne. Okay. Um, Anne LaRoyer, 12 Pierce Street. Um, thank you uh, for this uh, hearing. It seems that um, things are heading toward being approved for this hotel project, in spite of many still unresolved concerns. Um, I'm hoping that this, um, in the long run, this project will be successful and will end up being a good neighbor for our part of Arlington. Um, I also hope it will increase tourism and economic development as envisioned, and I hope it'll bring in the kinds of tax receipts that uh, the proponents are talking about. However, I also hope that you can understand and sympathize with our neighborhood's real skepticism and concerns um, for both short-term and longer-term impacts and potential unintended consequences for this project, especially regarding traffic, parking and public safety. 
others can argue and, and have argued more knowledgeably than I can about some of the questionable zoning and legal decisions that have been exposed during this review process. I just want to speak specifically for the neighborhood and for many other residential areas around town that are adjacent to small scale, previously at least, small scale neighborhood business districts like this one and other places like this where large scale oversized developments are likely to occur. I'm going to be sympathizing with those neighbors as well. The 40 or 50 families in this immediate residential neighborhood of Clark, Pierce, and Lock Streets will be the most directly affected by this development. It's going to drastically change the character of our neighborhood, and many of us feel that our concerns have not been listened to or taken seriously. The planning department staff and ARB members seem to have spent many hours meeting with the applicant and his legal and design team to fine tune this development but very little effort has been spent to reach out to the neighbors. We can see that some of the minor tweaks um, have been made to the site plan and the design elements, but the imposing overall dimensions of this project have changed very little during the review process. It also seems that the reports and comments from the town's own Transportation Advisory Commission and Disability Commission have been dismissed as has been discussed. Some of those things have been taken into account, but essentially they were put aside. I'm hoping that we can all learn from this rather disturbing experience to be more sensitive to neighbors' concerns, to reach out and engage residents in the planning process from the beginning and try to accommodate and mitigate specific problems and concerns as they arise. We can take a lesson from Julia Myrak and her team who did just that for their proposed housing development at 1165 Mass Ave. They contacted us residents in this very same neighborhood and invited us to a Zoom meeting to present their project and solicit feedback before they presented it publicly to the select board. We appreciated that effort and we hope that this can be viewed as a good precedent for future projects that will come before the redevelopment board. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ann. Darcy Devney, um, please state your name and address as you come on, please. Thank you for doing that, Anne. Appreciate your comments. Uh, hello, my name, yeah, is Darcy. my name is Darcy Devney. I live on Thorndike Street in East Arlington. I'm a long-term Arlington resident and a member of the Arlington Disability Commission. Um, as TAC and Mr. Seltzer noted, the project submission is lacking and or unclear when it comes to accessibility of various kinds both legally and morally required. Yes, the developer's lawyer is correct that valet parking does allow properties to be exempted from some of the HP space requirements. However, note that people with certain disabilities have modified cars or vans where the operations and hardware would be completely unfamiliar to valets. For example, because of leg problems, the pedals may be located in unfamiliar places or even swapped. The gas pedal is where the brake should be since you and I both know that a 50 room hotel must provide a minimum of three accessible rooms, one of which must have a roll in shower. Why aren't those currently in the plans? The, the diagrams actually dry out the furniture in each room, but not bother to have any ADA rooms. So I'm not sure what the timing is there. Another example, those ramps on the intersection with Clark Street, I just noticed, uh, seem to be oriented incorrectly since it's supposed to guide the pedestrian with disabilities directly across the, so the crosswalk. It's supposed to sort of point you. Um, the Arlington Disability Commission offered to meet with you and share not just ADA standards, but also observations from our lived experience, which you're not obviously not familiar with. I want to make sure that people understand that the access aisle at your front entrance, why it must be 20 by 5 or bigger and level, less than 2% grade, it's because, if you've ever seen this happen, the ramp unfolds from the side of the van, so it has to be a space big enough and level enough for a ramp to safely unfold and stay flat and parallel to the ground, and it has to actually reach the ground so that the wheelchair could roll off. Or, the standard elevator size doesn't necessarily fit a power wheelchair and a guide dog together. The Institute for Human-Centered Design recently finished a thorough evaluation complete with photos of ADA deficiencies of 27 public buildings in Arlington. And the Disability Commission was frankly appalled to learn 
the 12 public school facilities renovated or completely newly rebuilt in the last decade and therefore subject to the same 2010 ADA standards had numerous failures in restrooms, parking spaces, drinking fountains, doors, door open, et cetera, including the Gibbs School, which was renovated in 2018 and needs more than $25,000 of renovations. Problems range from small, relatively easy and cheap to fix issues to best practices to more expensive mistakes that never should have been made. For example, the measurements for where an accessible toilet should be placed are simple. They're easy to understand and they're easy to implement, but didn't happen. So we'll be sending the information about the Lexington Hotel project to the building inspector, but I urge you not to delay dealing with disability access issues until building inspection and occupancy permit time, because tearing up the entire entrance to the hotel, regrading, et cetera, that won't be cheap and it won't be easy. Further, we ask that you be mindful not to scapegoat people with disabilities as the reason for a delayed permit process, an occupancy certificate, or change order fees. Your architects and subsequent builders and contractors are all supposed to be responsible for legally mandated access to your building. The ADA standards have not been properly followed to date, unfortunately does not fill one with confidence that you can and will do the right thing. And the earlier we work on those issues, the better. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go over because I think it's an important issue. And one of the conditions I think we'll put in place is that those ADA items uh, be dealt with prior to the issuance of the building permit moving forward. Uh, Don Seltzer, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. The board has my detailed comments of several serious deficiencies. I hope that you have found time to read them. I'll just briefly summarize a few. The building is simply too big for this size lot. It exceeds the zoning code by several thousand square feet. It does not qualify for the 10% bonus exception that the applicant seeks. And as Jean noted that even if it did qualify for the bonus, it would still be over the maximum allowable floor area. The building is also too tall. The portion that is in the B2 district is limited to three stories and 40 feet. So what does a few feet in an extra story matter? It probably matters a lot to the residents of Pierce and Clark Street. Behind me is a section of the Trump border wall. How would you like that looming over your backyard? Now imagine a second section stacked on top. That is what the neighbors on Pier Street would see. Height really does matter. The front circular driveway is a design disaster because the architects did not realize early on the lot is not flat, that it falls off by four feet from west to east. This redesign of the steep front driveway is actually impassable to ordinary passenger sedans. They will bottom out while trying to get over the hump at the crest. And most troubling is it completely ignores state law on accessible drop off and uh, loading zones. And contrary to what was stated earlier, it is required for valet parking to have a accessible passenger drop off and loading zone. Um, I was gonna say something about the ADA requirements, but Darcy has covered that pretty well. On the room tax revenue estimates that were given, these are highly inflated. They suggest an average room rate of more than $500 per night and 100% occupancy rate for 365 days a year for the next 40 years. Consider that. Finally, there is the matter that our zoning bylaw simply does not allow a hotel in the B2 section of the property. That was the clear promise of this board when it presented the mixed use bylaw to town meeting in 2016. I'll leave you with the words of the chairman at that time. You won't see any major developments going into a B2 district. Any use that comes into a neighborhood has to comply with what is already permitted in that district. And it also has to be within the character of the neighborhood. Uh, those words, were given four years ago, I would think they would be true today. Thank you. I see Ivana. Uh, please state your name and address, Ivana.
You can go ahead, Ivana. Just state your name and address. We can't we can't hear you. I can see you, but I can't hear you. We'll come back to you once uh, once you've had a chance to figure that out. Go to Michael Sandler. Michael Sandler, 18 Pierce Street. Uh, for the first 90 minutes of this meeting, I heard the word neighbors or neighborhood a grand total of three times until uh, Mr. Watson spoke. Um, we have been ignored here. Um, we are going to be the ones most directly affected uh, by this monolith. Uh, looming over our neighborhood and changing the uh, look and feel of this neighborhood. Um, a yes vote would make this, um, this dear neighborhood unsafe, congested, and unattractive. Um, this is not a boutique hotel. These are small rooms. Um, it's unclear who the uh, intended um, um, hotel guests would be, but there's not much room inside these, uh, these small spaces. Um, as Mr. Seltzer has referred to several times, um, it's not clear if what you're doing is within the bounds of our town's laws. Um, I've seen a, a lot of these laws moved around and um, so many exceptions to them uh, we have we have bylaws for a reason, and um, I know that we as abutters have rights. And I'm curious if members of the board have driven by and, and looked at the site and have traveled down Clark Street to Pier Street and envisioned what this development would actually look like. Um, this this development is brazenly disrespectful to those of us who live here and have set down roots here and have invested in our homes and our families. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James Fleming, go ahead. Is it working? I can hear you, yep. Awesome, thanks. Uh, James Fleming, 1226 Mass Ave. Um, I think this would look pretty good. Um, right now, it's kind of an eyesore of the current site. It's just a, well, basically it's just a bunch of parked cars. Uh, I think this would be, at the very least, an improvement. I don't know anything about legalities, and I don't particularly care. Um, as long as it can be done legally, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with this design the way it is, um, as far as aesthetics go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ivana, I, I'll go back to you. Name and address, please. Hi, are you able to hear it now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I'm at 34th Pierce Street, uh, direct abutter to the proposed hotel. Uh, just want to say, as a mom in the neighborhood and a butter, I am concerned. Uh, firstly, as a mother, the current proposal uh, will certainly create traffic congestion in the neighborhood, neighboring streets since the parking lot for the employees, uh, hotel patrons, and delivery trucks is just too tight. Uh, just for background, this is a very young neighborhood with 10 plus children in the area. Um, the kids and families are out there, spontaneous gatherings every day. We chat on the front steps, kids ride bikes, play, we meet the neighborhood dogs and, and walkers. Um, and all the families will certainly have to up their game in terms of vigilance due to the increased traffic on the streets. Additionally, I have the feeling that there's been uh, some very just purely profit maximizing des design decisions um, that do not sell me on the idea that this is a boutique hotel that will fit in the character of the neighborhood. And then um, secondly, as an abutter, I'd just like to um, underline Don's, Don Seltzer's statements earlier. Um, you know, my husband just finished a deck, building a deck the past five months right outside, and we'd certainly um, like to continue having a reasonable amount of open space and site that was assumed and 
given the zoning area um, of the of the proposed site. Um, thank you for the board for the consideration that you've provided and um, just wanted to raise these main concerns. Thank you. Carl Wagner. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, Carl Wagner, 30 Edge Hill Road, Arlington. Uh, thank you to the board for the continued review of this project and uh, to the public who has spoken so far on it. I'd, I'd echo most of the critical comments I heard. I think it's very important to remember that as far as I know, the applicant doesn't even own the property that would complete this yet. Um, I believe he was also the only bidder in, in, a, in a strange transaction from my perspective anyway, to uh, eventually obtain the, 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 the property. Furthermore, uh, I'm concerned that the ARB has a, a moral and a legal requirement to follow the bylaws of Arlington and can offer some slight variances or relief, it's been called. But this property goes well beyond the limit of what the ARB should and can provide to the property owner. I, I'm concerned that I've seen pictures showing that the uh, developer himself has properties with trash and things like dumpsters or, or uh, strange containers on it and old cars. I'm not seeing that this is a Hyatt property or a Marriott property. And I've been told also that what the original plan was for was a boutique hotel, a few rooms, a B&B type thing. This is far too large. The, the traffic and parking are serious issues. There's a handicap issue we've heard about. Uh, it just goes on and on and we're bargaining. Uh, I hear the ARB even trying to bargain with the developers. If the developer tells Arlington what its laws are and the developer tells the ARB how it is responsible to the people and the voters via the select men and women. I, I would ask you strongly to say yes, uh, commercial and, and retail business are great for Arlington and, and go forward with that. Go forward with a hotel or a BNB and b on this place, but absolutely not what's been produced uh, so far to you. It's just, it's a mockery of our laws. It's illegal and immoral in my opinion. And the poor people who live around this should vote all of the folks who put people in power to say yes to this out. The select board really need to stand up and say the ARB should not be voting yes for products and pro uh, properties that, that, that go against the, uh, the basic property that, that pe people bought into, the basic things that the neighbors bought into. So I ask you in the ARB to say no to this tonight because of its many deficiencies in, in standing up for the people, the residents and the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aram Hallman. Of test, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Thank you. My name is Aram Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. I urge the ARB to reject this project for the many reasons that opponents have already given. This is the wrong use, in the wrong place, at, with the virus, the wrong time, and it is in the wrong zoning district. The land is too sloped. There is not enough parking, and it's trying to cram in too many rooms and too much in general on too little land. It's a non-conforming use. Mrs. O'Connor earlier said that you have to give this project what you gave other projects. Notice the demand that was in her tone. The ARB is abusing the EDR process and setting a series of terribly unwise precedents in allowing excess after excess beyond what zoning allows, and you're seeing the inevitable result, which is that developers come in and excite and use those other decisions as precedent and insist that they deserve the same. That's not what planning and redevelopment is about, nor should it be. In pursuit of redevelopment, the ARB has given the pro proponent a pass on issue after issue, density, area, height, parking, disability access among them, concentrating on the details while ignoring the big picture, which is just that it's too big. Thus far in this hearing, all the people except maybe one that you have heard comment are opposed to this or favor it only with major reservations. 
I'm looking for an ARB that will set standards with which developers will generally comply. Developers currently ask for many, many exceptions, and the ARB generally grants them. That's not the way it should be. Instead, developers should study the zoning and propose projects that generally comport with zoning. Exceptions, the kind you've been making so much, should be rare and very site-specific. Instead, they're common. They're simply a matter of negotiation. Developers will come in, ask for the moon, and you give them part of it. You can put lipstick, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Again, I urge you to reject this project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gordon Jamison. Go ahead, Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I've, I've, this is the first time I've attended an ARB meeting, I, I will admit. And I, um, I found it very interesting. Um, I found uh, the discussion by, um, obviously the proponents were uh, arguing in favor and uh, the members of the board, I thought, um, asked insightful questions. I particularly liked uh, Mr. Lau's idea of a, a roof garden. Um, in addition to the other more substantive issues that are, and technical issues that the board is m much more vastly um, qualified to address than I am. Um, the way I look at Mass Ave and Broadway is that um, in the long term, um, I believe a lot of our zoning allows for a more massive development along that corridor. Um, al along the lines of what one might see in the center of Brookline. And what I remarked uh, in uh, going out to dinner there a number of years ago was when you have that sort of uh, corridor, when you walk past it towards where the, um, the abutters discussed, suddenly it's much quieter because the buildings actually act as a buffer to the noise along the main thoroughfare. So, um, and, and we do need development because if you don't want development, then you really got to love overrides. And I didn't hear anybody of the uh, opponents uh, saying that they love overrides tonight. So um, uh, I'm generally in favor of, of development like this in town. Uh, I'll leave the, um, the details to uh, the board and the developers and the other people who have commented negatively. But um, I, I only raised my hand because I wanted to have more than one other person say that they are in favor of this type of development in town. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Uh, Joanne Preston, I see you waving your hand, so I'll let you go next. DA requirements and the, and the welfare of neighbors. I think what's been left out is a consideration of the Audison Middle School, which is about two blocks away one of the reasons is, of course, there have been no students there since mid-March. So there are two things that I wanted to bring up. One, there was some allusion to a, a traffic study. And of course, uh, TAC also made a study. However, the 900 students and over 200 faculty and staff were, have not been there since mid-March. So I wonder when these studies are done. Um, and I think it's very important to take it into consideration. For instance, uh, I really don't believe that people will be coming and going randomly at random hours in the hotel. If it's for tourists, they're going to be leaving in the morning to go out and tour. So that's just when 900 students and 200 staff and faculty are coming to the Audison School. Um, as a mother who sat in a long line of traffic for a number of years, I can tell you it's very congested. I think that should be part of a consideration. Um, the second part, oh, and the safety of the students and student cyclists who are coming also have to be taken into consideration. Um, the second is, I'm, 
not actually impressed with the arguments that there's suitable visibility of trucks and valet drivers um, leaving, entering Clark, Clark Street from the parking lot. Now, of these 900 students, some, 30, 50, make their way across Mass Ave and go down these side streets um, on their way to the bike path, Summer Street, the Dallin School area where they may live, and the bicycle uh, path. I just don't understand with a wall that's five and a half to six and a half feet high with greenery on top allows for sufficient um, visibility for trucks coming out and going up to the intersection. For instance, I was thinking of a 14-year-old riding his or her bicycle. Coming down Clark Street, would they have enough time to stop as the truck pulls out into the street? Um, I think that's a very important consideration. And I'm sorry I brought up the Audison School early on in the process, but somehow um, I haven't heard it being brought up again, partly because the students, 900 of them, and the 200 faculty and staff are not there, but they will be um, certainly by the spring. So I have one other thing to say is I appreciate that the developers, investors, and lawyers are getting frustrated at the amount of time, but I think they have to appreciate that whatever goes up there, we will have to live with for about 50 years. So if the design is wrong, the design is dangerous, that we really need to put in enough time to review it. Thank you. Lastly, we have, or at least uh, for the moment, lastly, we have Steve Revelak. Steve, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Steve Revelak and I live at 111 Sunnyside Avenue. I would like to comment on this proposal from the perspective of a bicycle commuter who rides up and down Mass Ave. So, you know, pandemics notwithstanding, my typical commute, I get on Mass Ave at uh, Broadway Plaza. I head west until Lexington Center. At the end of the day, I turn around and come back. I do this five days a week, 12 months a year. And as a cyclist who rides through this area twice a day, I feel completely fine with the proposed hotel and the, um, you know, and what I anticipate to be its impacts on traffic. So yes, I acknowledge that the intersection of Appleton Street, Appleton Place, and Mass Ave is a dangerous intersection. Um, it is dangerous due to westbound automotive traffic making left turns across Mass Ave onto Appleton Street or Appleton Place. These were the conditions that caused the cyclist fatality a few months ago. These are also the same conditions uh, where I was hit by a truck, you know, some years back. But, you know, traffic to and from the hotel will not be turning up and down Appleton Street, from, you know, Mass Ave onto Appleton Street. The traffic will just be going back and forth straight, which as a cyclist, I feel rather comfortable with. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there other people who would like to participate? I think I've gotten everyone. Uh, unless I see anyone's hand raised. I will presume that everyone has spoken. Paul, to different Paul Rea would like to speak. Paul Rea, go ahead, Mr. Rea. Name and address, please. You're going to need to unmute yourself, Mr. Rea. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Rea. I live at 44 Columbia Road in Arlington, lifetime resident. Um, I'd like to point out that um, even though valet parking uh, is, is allowed, it does require that there be van spaces in front of the building uh, for those van users who are using hand controls because valets cannot utilize a hand-controlled van. I don't see any of that in the plan. Uh, I'd like to also say that uh, the rooms themselves, we haven't seen the entire specs, but the rooms themselves 
are so small as to probably not allow uh, a standard uh, wheelchair. Um, and uh, we really want to be able to see the specs for the rooms themselves before anything is, is uh, voted on this evening. Uh, I think it's an important thing that we have a say representing those in Arlington with disabilities of all sorts to make sure that it's ADA compliant across the board. And let me point out that Arlington is an age-friendly community. Arlington has committed to the World Health Organization that we are going to look at everything in terms of how elders are going to benefit from buildings or from anything in our town. And I haven't heard anything that tells me that elders are going to be able to really benefit from this building. Um, I would say please hold off on voting uh, acceptance uh, for a building permit until we've had an opportunity to take a look at this and give, them, give our input and our life experiences to the architects and the planners and the owners to make the building better. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Then I'll bring it back to the board for discussion. All right, seeing that I am closing public comment on this. I think we've <clears throat> heard from everyone who wishes to be heard on this issue, both uh, this evening in writing and during our other hearings. So bring it back to the board. Um, before I do so, I want to address a couple of things that have come up um, and the idea that, that the ARB is, is not being responsive to issues of disability. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I want it to be clear that this will be a condition uh, of any special permit that's granted. And just because a special permit is granted does not mean a building permit is granted. We are allowing the exterior, uh, more or less of the building to move forward, the layout of the project, uh, the other details that are in there, uh, as far as uh, accessible rooms, hallways, et cetera, are the purview of the building department and are to be enforced as the project comes to its final, final stages. Uh, this is one step in the process. It is certainly a large step. Uh, it is a big step, <clears throat> but it is not the last step. And there are other points of review that have specific control over whether rooms are, are accessible and can uh, specifically require that that be done. Uh, one of the conditions that I would suggest as part of any permit here is that those are specifically adhered to, that the minimums that are at least the minimums are met. Um, and I don't think any of the, uh, the other members of the board would disagree with me on those points. Uh, as to the parking issue and the issue of a van spot out front, I'd turn that over to the applicant to see whether that was a possibility. Uh, <clears throat> and Mary or Jim, you could answer that question. You, uh, Andrew, could you just um, uh, explain a little more exactly what what your uh, the ADA is no problem in the conditions, the parking. I wasn't quite following everything you mentioned on that. Yeah, it, it, it seems as if there is. Uh, I just want to make sure that all the parking requirements uh, that we're approving meet all of the ADA standards, including anything for van spot with hand controls, as Dr. Ray mentioned in his comments. Any, anything related to this property as it relates to on-site or those sidewalk pads we talked about will comply with ADA requirements. Um, and to echo what you said, not only that, but other um, um, comments that had been made about other things that I don't think have the merit these subjects do will also be complied with also before, as you mentioned, not only ADA, but a building permit or anything else will be done. Andrew, the reality is a building permit couldn't issue and a certificate of occupancy couldn't issue unless it was in compliance. That's, that's my knowledge, but I, I wanted you to hear you say it. Thank you, Mary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, just to reiterate that. So I, I'll bring it back to the board. And again, um, I have a few comments about this project um, <clears throat> as we've gone on. You know. I, We've been over this for more than a year. 
at this point, and I think it's a better project than when it started. Uh, some of the things that need to be addressed are issues of the building department, really enforcement issues. Um, you know, Mr. Doherty and uh, Attorney O'Connor were, if this is approved, uh, we're relying on you to be good neighbors and the neighbors are relying on you to be good neighbors and to do what you said so that traffic issues don't spill over into highly residential neighborhoods uh, where kids are playing in the street where uh, you know, a tour bus doesn't take a wrong turn down Clark and Pierce Street and uh, get stuck or block emergency vehicles. Um, it's very important that there be a good delineation between uh, what really are two neighborhoods, I think, and where we consider the neighborhood character. Uh, we look at the neighborhood that's along Mass Ave, which is uh, a commercial stretch from uh, Brattle Square all the way up through the Heights District. And despite the puzzling zoning map, uh, this project doesn't necessarily seem out of character for me along Mass Ave. Uh, but you will have to abide by the terms of the special permit, the general and the special conditions, and be a good neighbor to the people that live behind you uh, and earn their trust. I think we've heard that that's an important uh, concern that they have, not all of which we can address in writing. Uh, but just for your own economic viability. Um, <clears throat> I think Gordon Jamison's point about Brookline was worth heeding, where you have vibrant commercial corridors, and the second you walk around the corner there, uh, you never know that there's uh, a commercial building on the front of the street, that all of those residences uh, thrive, that uh, people are frequently outside enjoying their neighborhoods without concern of traffic, trash, noise, et cetera. Um, you know, Jim, I know you're a longtime resident of Arlington. Uh, I trust that you can do this. I think you're hearing things that, that have been said that I'm saying to you, uh, sort of presumes that this gets approved, but uh, I felt that it needed to be said here. Um, so we'll move on to the other members of the board to ask questions uh, <clears throat> and to opine as to where we stand this evening, but uh, I wanted to make that clear following the public input that's been given tonight. So uh, I'll go in the same order I went earlier and begin with Rachel. So to my mind, I, I think the, the big issue that we still need to, to talk about is the, um, the, the building height relative, the number of stories and the, the use of that fourth story relative to the, um, to the shared space. Um, and whether or not, you know, I, I think, and again, I, I want to go back to the, the applicant. What I heard was that we as a board need to choose one of the two options that was put forth rather than um, that, that at this point he would, he would rather give up the additional rooms rather than come to a compromise such as what Ken had suggested. I think I'd want that to be clarified so that we can then, as a board, make an appropriate decision. Um, because I, I, from what I've heard, that seems to be the item where, where we most need to, to weigh in on as we make our decision this evening. Jim, I, that seems like something that is, that is important to all of us. Um, so we can focus on that. Go ahead, Mary, if you want to respond uh, to Rachel. I, my understanding is that the board is going to have to make a determination. Am I correct, Jim? That's um, between the two alternatives. Well, um, it, it, it is true. And Rachel, I don't want to get into semantics because I think we're probably pretty close to the same page. But the bottom line is, um, no, my desire um, would not be to go um, to the um, second version that we provided, um, um, just the elevation, uh, just the uh, rendering of the fourth floor. My um, desire is to stick with the proposal we've all worked on very hard. Um, I just wanna clarify without digressing, everybody needs to, to, to kind of put this in perspective. By right, that lot is entitled to 21,045 square feet of, of gross floor area. 
um, the revised plan is below that, so it meets that. The submitted plan is only, and I'm not saying only as it's dismissive, but I just wanna put it in perspective because there's been a lot of comments made about we're looking for all types of relief and, and it's being way misstated. We're requesting that the area be increased on that site by 2,100 square feet. And what that brings us to is the proposal we have submitted. And in, in exchange for that, we're talking about that public space. So um, while paying attention to all the discussion tonight, I also went and looked at one of the plans we have here. I think a good compromise going to Ken's point in, in, in your, your question here is that we have proposed a roof um, garden in both scenarios. Under the 50 unit scenario, um, I have proposed one that is approximately 12 feet by 20 feet. And um, I heard, I think it was your comment, Rachel, earlier about the massing. Um, and if I am incorrect, I apologize, whoever did make the comment. What, what I, I think may be a good compromise is we would take the, there's a unit on the fourth floor there um, that is a very small unit. We would take it from the Clark Street side and we would put it to the opposite end of the building on the right hand side of that fourth floor. Therefore, moving that, that 200 and some odd square foot area we are proposing for a rooftop deck there as in at the opposite end. And one, it would reduce the massing um, if that was a concern. Again, as you're coming uh, west to east on Mass Ave. So essentially you would move from, we'll call it the seven and a half foot step back to probably almost 18 foot step back, figuring a room is somewhere around 12 feet. So 18, 19 feet back. And that would give a much larger area as well um, for a rooftop garden spot. And I'm very comfortable doing that as well if we can put the um, agreement together on the open space. I, I really appreciate that, that flexibility. I think that, um, again, I don't want to speak for Ken, but I think that that addresses um, what, what was attractive about what was proposed there. Jenny, I'm not, is it possible for you to, to bring that up just so that we can all look at it and make sure that we're all seeing the, and hearing the same thing? This plan? Uh, it's actually, um, actually the one, the, the originally proposed plan, because Jim, I think what you were saying was that you would move that, that unit that was furthest towards Clark Street to where you currently have the open space, the bonus area. Yeah, actually, Jenny, one of the easiest, if, and it's up to you, Rachel, the one I was going to propose, it's E11, it's right at the beginning, it's actually the electrical lighting plan um, that basically shows the room layouts out there, and it shows how currently on the right-hand side is an area that we had for the roof garden. You'll now see that kind of smaller room on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side at Clock Street, so essentially you would see that go away. Um, yep, there you go. So right now, if you see on the front right corner, it's noted as open um, area. Yes. Okay. So we so flip that, basically. We, you got it, ex exactly. Yeah. And you can I, see, you're mm -hmm. gonna, I'm sorry, you're gonna pick up a little more where the second uh, floor, uh, third floor is underneath there, that, that goes out a little. So I think it would give a much larger view to that roof garden. Right, I, I feel very comfortable with that proposal and um, I, uh, I would support that. I like that proposal as well. And I think what we do is agree to whatever principle uh, and have it, <clears throat> have it worked out as a condition to be determined prior to the issuance of uh, building permit and then final certificates of occupancy. And I think it can be done as a memorandum of understanding that agreement rather than an easement, Mary, but you can um, 
you can opine on that as well if you'd like. I, I didn't hear the last, Pat Andrew. I'm sorry. You sorry, I said. Uh, you know, I think I, I, I want to be clear that working out working out the agreement, as Jim put it, uh, is not something that needs to be done this evening. As far as those terms and conditions uh, are put in place, there's an understanding that it will be uh, worked out before the final permits and, and certificates are issued. But that uh, yeah, there will be a goal to work out a memorandum of understanding as to uh, the use of that public space. Yes, I think that's. A fair statement. I think that's I think that's preferable to an easement. That's fine with us. Okay. If I could interject, I don't think I'm going to agree with this, and I want to talk procedurally for a second before I talk about the substance. I've got about 15 or so special permit conditions that I'd like to be in whatever we do tonight. And maybe a procedural way to do it is to go down the issues one by one and vote on them and then we'll know which ones are conditions and not and then vote on the whole package. Otherwise, I don't know how to do all of them. Maybe there's a better way. I, I am struggling with the usefulness of the public space. I can't figure out how it's going to work well. I can't figure out who's going to be in charge of it. I don't like the idea that it's only going to be a couple days a week and a few hours a day. I don't think that's a trade-off, an acceptable trade-off for what they would be getting in exchange. And if we do that, they still are a little bit over the numbers, even if we give them the 10%. I much prefer the option they presented today where there's no public space and they have just a few larger rooms on top, which theoretically they can rent out for more money each night. And it reduces the massing and the impact on the neighborhood. And if I have to weigh, as I'm trying to do, the advantages of that public space against the advantages of having a very slightly smaller building, but that meets the gross floor area and far as of right, I'm leaning really strongly in favor of the smaller area on the fourth floor, the larger roof deck and meeting the far and the um, gross floor area as of right. So I, I understand where Rachel and Andrew are coming from, and if I didn't have that other option, I would probably be where both of you are, but I prefer the other option that they presented to us that Jim would not prefer, but he probably is going to live with if that's what we do. Well, let's, let's discuss this now. I think we have three, three opinions known. Uh, Ken, where do you fall on this? Uh, well, I don't totally um, agree with Gene. Um, I, I think my original assessment was there's eight units. I think, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight units on the first, on, on the fourth floor. And I think if we take two of the units away and relocate the open space, that was my original thought. And I think that would bring the massing down enough. And if the square footages work and it makes uh, Gene's um, argument work, then then we're, we're in agreement. I'm not, oh, sure, I'm not sure by deleting those two units is enough, but I'm just saying, uh, all I'm asking for is that one small unit and, and one, one more unit so that it gives enough of a step back. Um, I think I like Rachel's idea about you know, having in a corner and so forth like that. But I think um, having 48 units as opposed to 50 units is is what, what I had suggested earlier on. Um, and, you I know. Mean, I, I certainly think that's better than the 50 units. And, and, uh, and, it gives and, a and I had asked Jim to see if that works out mathematically, economically, and so forth like that. And, and you know, with, you know, I don't know. Uh, Go ahead, Jim. I see, I see you wanting to chime in. Go ahead. 
I just have to clarify, and this is no slight to either one of the previous two uh, gentlemen uh, who spoke, but as long as things continue to be repeated, people think they're true. I have to make it abundantly clear. Both scenarios, just because one individual wants to say they don't, they're over, and I'm not referring to the two prior speakers, but whatever the, the two prior speakers' information has been is 100% incorrect. The proposal for the 50 units meets the criteria of gross floor area of the buy right 1.5, as well as the 2,100 square feet, assuming this board um, elects to grant the easement uh, that we're offering. Now, if the board doesn't, and this can is where you and I got a little bogged down earlier, is let's just do simple math you're suggesting. What you're talking about is knocking off two units. Um, well, for the sake of argument, we'll call it about 700 square feet. So you are suggesting that rather than the 2,100 square feet, we get 1,400 square feet. Um, I guess my question really back to you is, in order to do, which is fine. Um, again, I have real strong concerns because we've talked to the people that operate these and they operate high-end boutique hotels, two of which are in Port Square. What, so if we're looking for 1,400 square feet, the only way we get that is through exercising that bonus area. What then would you be looking for there? Because if it's, you know, 140 square feet, I mean, we'll do it. But, um, but we can't, we simply cannot do all of my vision, so I don't have to bore you guys with and, and everybody here, with what my vision is trying to put a first class operation together of the public space. I'm not trying to be difficult and we certainly would like to have 48 because it's easy to try to convince someone that has told you five times, if you don't have 50, we probably wouldn't be interested in it. Um, numerous um, response that way. So at that point, I'd almost rather convince them rather than saying, I can't get the 50 and oh, by the way, I'm gonna come back with 48, but you're still gonna not have, you know, you're giving up your whole front area there of 675 square feet. And by the way, you have to do all these things to make it, 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 it happen there. It, it doesn't make sense. Very quickly, in terms of why it would be extremely successful, are the reasons that other people from the public mentioned, Ms. O'Connor mentioned, and I have mentioned, which is first class. We get the Schraub Mill. I went there from, believe it or not, everybody hear it, the Pimenta School in third grade for a field trip. We went there, we learned about um, the picture frames and everything. You ask any kid today, uh, probably in the entire school system, you'll be lucky to find 10% of them that know about that gem, in particularly the history. We want to get them out of there. We want to give them a profile on Mass Ave, an audience um, where people can, can get that knowledge. We want to get Mr. Duffy and other people uh, from the Historical Society out there to do a first class operation. So again, um, if, you, if you have an idea, Ken, of what you envision by dropping those two units, you would be looking for from the public space, I, it would give me a better um, idea of giving you an exact response to to your proposal. The public space, I can, uh, I would say just um, tone it down to whatever makes sense uh, financially. You know, uh, I, I don't know the numbers, you know, like you're saying you want to provide 680 square feet of uh, public space at 50 units. What I'm saying is if you, if you provide 48 units and you can only provide 200 square, 200 square feet of public space two days a week, I'm okay with that. That's me speaking. I'm not speaking for the rest of the board now, okay? I appreciate it. Uh, okay, I'm just saying because it brings the mass of the building down enough, it adds roof garden up top, and I'm, I'm willing, I'm willing uh, to talk about the trade with the, the public space because 
I really don't think it's going to be used that much. It's going to be used when it's used, it's going to be used, but it's not going to be every single day an activity is going to be happening there. I just don't see that happening. I, I don't see everybody getting in line trying to reserve space for that uh, thing there. It's a nice, it's a nice amenity. It's nice to have, but it's going to happen maybe once or twice a week at most. And that's just, and, and I'm okay with that. But, you know, having the ability to say, we're going to have, have access to that seven days a week and everybody's going to use it. I think that's just uh, not putting realism into, into this. And I rather trade that realism into the massing of the building. So I would say then probably, if I could, Andrew. Go ahead. I would say yeah, that course. this is what Andrew was bringing up. I believe this is where Gene and you started gravitating to the same issue. I think, I think that's doable. I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we would be, if, if, we're, if we cannot get the four votes for the 50 units, um, then I think Ken's uh, suggestion is, in your, coupled with yours, which do it in a memorandum, and that will be contingent upon um, the conditions, then I think that's, that's the second best option, clearly, um, from this being a success story for the town, as well as um, you know, economically feasible. I mean, I could live with that too, although I would like to know that we're going to get the public open space for more than two days a week. I think we don't have to decide what that is right now, but it has to be, you know, I don't know how many days, five days a week and something like that. Or else if it's only two days a week, I don't see it being used. I see it as maybe there are going to be some benches that are always available there and then people through some reservation system can reserve to have other events there and maybe the events are scheduled just a couple days a week but otherwise i think it has to be available as public open space i think jean if i can what you're saying is that it can be structured for two events a week but that it, it has to be available for the public. If I want to come down Mass Ave and sit on a bench outside there, I would have that ability to sit in that space. Correct. That's what yeah, that, that, that I think was David's point earlier this evening is that mm -hmm. people are going to be turned away for non-organized events, but that organized large scale events will be limited to two days a week. And I think that's, that's something we can all, we can be all, all be on board with. I'm very agreeable to that. Jim, are you agreeable to that? I, 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 I the devils are in the details. I, I can, I can tell you that again. If, if it's going to be something, and I know this wasn't Gene's comment, but uh, a seven day a week type thing that's going to be disruptive. Um, you know, people are going to be there loitering. We all talk about this with the best intentions, um, but you know, when you say public and open all the time, it's, it's you know, uh, it, it's tough to put that, that genie in the bottle. We don't want to, you know, have to be involved in police stating here. Um, again, I'm open to the concept. Um, we would have to agree on the two things, the, the time of the use, and then the amount of that reduced area um, to support the 1400. Um, you know, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm agreeable to it in many respects. I just can't, um, you know, um, I thought we had it with Gene, but he's, he's extended that a little more, which is fine from his negotiation standpoint. But I think we just have to uh, ultimately bring it there. So if you want to vote it that way, we can vote it for 50 with, with the same type of understanding we'll try to get together. I'm fine. The second best thing is 48. Um, if we get it, I think we should work on finalizing um, um, that memorandum in short order to make sure we're on the same page as not to waste a lot of, um, you know, more time and effort on that. Um, so I think to put that as a condition is 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 fine. Okay. Now Jenny <clears throat> stated earlier that she has uh, a list of conditions. We'll bring it back out to that that are already drafted. Uh, Jenny, would you share your screen? 
with those, we can walk through those as a board. And then if there's anything additional to add in there, I think uh, that would be helpful to get us, move us forward a bit. Um, so the first handful are the general conditions that come as part of any special permit uh, as there, part of the EDR some, process. Some modifications um, to each of the, it's not, it's a little bit different than um, the way we write the general conditions. This one has some, um, uh, one addition to it, for example, the last sentence. So um, I'll let you read. If I can, yeah. I don't understand. We should, probably, the, we should probably just read them aloud. Let's, let's, let's do that. Go ahead, Jenny. Okay. The, um, and Mary, if you, or anybody, I'll just read. The final design sign exterior materials, landscaping, screening, bicycle racks, and exterior lighting plans shall be subject to the approval of the Arlington Redevelopment Board at the time when further operators are identified. Um, we typically have this sort of condition, but this is a little bit different because there's still an operator to come on the scene. Um, any substantial or material deviation during construction from the approved plans and specs is subject to the written approval of the board. The residential properties adjacent to the property will not be adversely effect, affected and no modification to the proposed massing of the building will be required. Can we, can we stop there? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know what that last sentence means because if um, uh, someone could argue that the allowance of the special permit adversely affects them. Mm -hmm. so. Um, I, I think that that's a very nebulous and no modification to the pros will be required. I don't know what that means, honestly, Jenny. I mean, it clearly um, there are uh, conditions that the developer has to comply with with respect to noise and uh, hours of operation and things like that. Um, I, I just think that's a, a problem, that sentence. Hey Mary, I, I think uh, what we want to say is the residential the residential properties adjacent to the property will not be adversely affected by any changes to the approved um, plans and no modifications proposed uh, no 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 uh, changes to modifications to proposed massing of the building. Be, uh, I, 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 you lost me now. You know what I'm saying, right, Jenny? <laughs> Basically, what you're trying to say there is that there will be no further modifications beyond what's approved today and what's also included in this. Yes. In these conditions. But so there will be the public hearing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So okay. I think that's the intent there. I think that was the intent. Yes. Thank you, Rachel. Right, so we need to revise that a little. Yes. Bit. Do you want we the do. language that Rachel just said? There will be. Can you repeat that? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> There will be no further, there will be no, um, or at the time of the final design submission. So basically this is all saying that when the operator is selected and they submit the final plans that will be submitted to the building, you know, when the final design is complete and you're about to su submit designs, we'll be able to look at it one more time, review the materials, et cetera. And that will not contain any um, modifications to the massing. That would affect um, the, the neighbors. Yeah, right, or other elements that would affect the, the neighbor, the residential okay. neighbors. But, At the time but, of the final design submission, there will be yes. no changes to the submission. There will be no changes that will adversely affect. I'm, yes. I'm, yes, the residential properties adjacent, the adjacent residential properties. Oh, whoops. You know how you're typing and everybody's watching you? Totally um, understand. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same thing when I speak. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I think you can delete the approved delete the rest. plans. Well, I would keep in no changes or modifications. No changes, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's the first general condition. The second, um, third. Mary, Mary, are you okay with that? Oh, sorry, Mary. Um, can you just bring it down, Jenny? It's 
Yep. Okay, it's big. What you're trying to say there is that there is going to be no changes to the approved plans. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I'm 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 confused now because shouldn't it be no changes or modification to the proposed massing of the building will be permitted rather Correct. than required? Good. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. Sorry. Oops. There's always a lawyer in a group. <laughs> Um, so the, if I move on, second, um, basically, uh, you know, the substantial and material deviation during construction has, is subject to written approval by the board. That's standard. Board maintains continuing jurisdiction over the permit. We can reopen the hearing. Of course, you know this. Snow removal yes. from all parts of the site, um, as well as abutting sidewalks, responsibility of the owner. Um, and shall be accomplished in accordance with town bylaws. Uh, trash pickup, which is per the required, per bylaws and per the required hours. Um, then uh, this is different. The owner shall provide a statement from the town engineer that all proposed utility services have adequate capacity to serve the development. The owner shall provide evidence that a final plan for drainage and surface water removal has been reviewed and approved by the town engineer. Mm -hmm. Upon installation of landscaping materials and other site improvements, the owner shall remain responsible for such materials and improvements and shall replace and repair as necessary to remain in compliance with the approved site plan. And then the issuance of the building permit and uh, providing contacts, which is required mm -hmm. for any development. Okay, now there's a, a special conditions. If I can move on. Yes. The rear parking lot shall be operated by a valet service only. The hotel spaces shall be available only for overnight guests. For hotel over, wait, only for hotel overnight guests, okay. Rear parking will not be used for or by restaurant patrons, hotel or restaurant staff, or persons other than the hotel's overnight guests via valet. Signage to that effect shall be conspicuous, conspicuously posted in the rear parking area. This shall be required of any future hotel and restaurant operators. This is all per past conversations. Correct. Um, okay. The owner shall install a sign that prohibits right turns onto Clark Street from the rear parking lot. Future operators of the hotel and restaurant must enforce this policy with the valet operators. A complete transportation demand management plan shall be submitted to the Department of Planning and Community Development for review and approval, including furnishing the department with any final lease or other such agreements for parking off site. The TDM shall finalize all available off-street parking for employees and tour buses, as well as identify ways the restaurant and hotel operators will incentivize employees to utilize other modes of transportation besides a personal vehicle. The owner is responsible for repairing the sidewalk between Massachusetts Avenue and the project driveway along the site frontage of Clark Street. The owner is also responsible for installing ADA compliant curb ramps and detectable warning panels, which I think we've kept at the intersection of Massachusetts Avenue and Clark Street and at the project's driveway on Massachusetts Avenue, the design and construction of which shall be reviewed and approved by the engineering department. That, before, before you go any yeah. further, Jenny, that is only the uh, curb that abuts the property. Yes. Okay. I want to be clear about that. Um, you mean project driveway on Massachusetts Avenue? Uh, I no, mean, it's the sidewalk it's on the Clark Street is, is uh, on the Clark, uh, Clark Street. It's only the hotel side of the Clark Street, not the not the Nicola's new, Pizza side. The, what is it in a bar or, or a, it's uh, a liquor store? Liquor liquor store? store. Yes. Yeah. Adjacent to the property is what I've added. Okay. Okay. The owners. Uh, this is the in relationship to the a lot of the conversation we we've been hearing. The owner is responsible for executing a memorandum of understanding MOU with the select board to run concurrent with the 40 year mixed use restriction to ensure that public access is afforded on the site for not less than two days per week in exchange for an increase in the FAR. The owner shall work with the Department of Planning and Community Development to identify a reasonable scheduling plan to be included in the MOU. So for um, that one, Jenny, what we had discussed was that 
public access is afforded yeah. seven days per week, but there can be events there up to two days a week or two days a week. Scheduled events. Scheduled events two days a week. Jim, are you okay with that? I, I, I guess again, I did. I, I'm fine with putting it at in in the conditions. I'll defer to Mary in terms of um, that. Obviously, she's comfortable with the language about drafting a memor memorandum of understanding that addresses the concerns we've all discussed. I, I want to be clear. What Jean is saying is that. Um, if three women come down the street on a day that there's nothing scheduled uh, to be held in that area and they want to sit on the bench there for an hour and a half, that they can do that. That they will not be told that they need to leave. That's what he's talking about for the unscheduled time. Okay. So that's, that's, that's an example we can all agree on. So let's give a different example. Let's say the three women decide that every single day they're going to come down and they're gonna sit there from seven in the morning to nine at night. And um, shall we say they're, they're not well-groomed or, or well-dressed 90% um, of the time. Is, is, that, is that what we're suggesting can happen seven days a week from 8 a.m. to seven o'clock at night? Uh, no. no, probably not. May I suggest uh, a raise that we would identify a reasonable scheduling and signage plan and the signage would address any issues relative to the owner's ability to enforce, you know, um, uh, length of time people are sitting or, you know, or other uh, perhaps uh, issues they would like to address. That's fine. Jim. That's, yeah, that makes sense. And it should probably be daylight hours also. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, sorry. Can we also add in that there be no uh, political um, displays allowed? Well, that, right. that's okay. Sorry, go ahead. What's the matter, Jean? I don't know if we can do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's something we would be able to do. First I, Amendment. I, I, I disagree. I think you are talking about the public access, not not the property owner rights. So if you're talking about- I'm public, talking about public access. Correct, it's, it, it would be similar to any park or any, any other town property, you, you can't have political signs there. Yeah, you can't have political meetings on- This, this feels like a detail that would happen in the MOU itself. Um, may, I, may I just um, go back to a point Jean was making? Uh, did you want from dawn to dusk? Was there a time frame here that you were starting to hint at? I was, saying, I was saying daylight hours. During daylight hours? Does that work for everybody? public access during daylight hours is I mean, important, et cetera. I mean, clearly one of the things you would want, and we would want in the MOU that people there are not being disruptive, you know, not causing a public disturbance, something like that. That can go in the MOU. That would go in the MOU. Yeah. I'm sure as the MOU is discussed and, and Jim yeah. is represented by more than competent counsel that any reservation of rights would be included there. Mm -hmm. Not left holding the bag uh, for anyone, any and everyone who may want to sit on the, okay. front, uh, the front lawn of his hotel. Shall I move on to the next one? Yes. 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 The owner shall limit deliveries to the site between 8.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. and shall require that the delivery vehicles accessing the site can utilize the front or rear driveways for loading and unloading, thereby preventing the need for loading and unloading on Massachusetts Avenue or Clark Street. The owner shall ensure full compliance with the Architectural Access Board and Americans with Disabilities requirements for all program and building components and all outdoor areas, including parking. I'd like to add a sentence to that and that the um, owner meet with representatives of the town's disability committee or commission 
whatever it's, it's called to discuss ADA issues. Well, I have to tell you, I think that's kind of the cart before the horse, Jean. I think that the building inspector should first review the plans um, and then the commission can review them. And if they have issues, we will meet with them at that point. But to just go and have a general discussion, I, uh, I don't think that that's productive. Well, I think it would be helpful to have a discussion with them somewhere along the line. Well, I, I don't disagree, but I don't think at this point, I mean, the board has never made that a requirement of any other applicant. And I think that that's treating Mr. Doherty differently. Um, the building inspector is ultimately, even if the commission tells Mr. Doherty to do something, the building inspector can say, no, that is not how it's to be done. So I think we should put the, the cart first, uh, the, the horse before, you know, and get this, the building inspector to look at this in the first instance, and then we'd be more than happy to sit down with the commission and go over it at that point. Don't you agree, Jim? Um. You have to unmute. I, I, I don't know how this has been uh, presented to the board because they have never never spoken to me about it. I made my comments clear about what me and my family think about disabled right. uh, people and people with disabilities. And um, quite frankly, I'm insulted that someone has attempted to somehow indicate to, to that committee um, that we are doing something less than would be would be appropriate and do you do you agree though with um, I, I agree and i don't need any condition but i'm happy to have it to speak not only to the council on disability anyone else in the town who is interested in in contributing to a positive discussion for a more positive outcome so i have no you, qualms with that if you want to have the meeting after you know, you submit something to inspectional services, that's fine with me. I didn't indicate in which order it would happen. That's fine, that's fine. Okay. So there'll be a meeting after submission to the building inspector. I'm confused about the timing, I admit. Um, <laughs> sorry, this is a little, um, the building inspector is the enforcement officer who enforces the architectural access board, ADA, et cetera. So what is the purpose of the meeting? May I, uh, I'm just trying to understand what, and then that helps me to understand the order of it. Rachel, were you gonna say something? I, I was just gonna say the same thing. I, I don't know that requiring a meeting with the commission as part of the special conditions um given that there is an enforcement body you know the the commission has um provided their comments and and i think following up on those we we need to ensure that the building inspector is the one who's um empowered to that, that we entrust that he's going to do what what that department is required to do which is to enforce the ADA requirements and the architectural access board. I, I agree with Rachel. I think we should just give it with the building commissioner. Uh, I think Jim's already said he's willing to, uh, to meet with uh, the other committees, but we should not make it part of the requirement. He, he's already stated he's willing to meet with the other uh, committees to just uh, hear what they say, and, and he's open to, to listen. So let's yeah. just leave it at that. I think the, the the building inspector knows what his job is and, and what to do. And okay, I'll withdraw. I'll withdraw. I think the owner has, has made a commitment to to go above and beyond what uh, is normally required. I, I I can I can be satisfied with that condition. It is without requiring that meeting. That's fine. I'll withdraw that request. The required, this might be different. The required building setback for the building in relation to Clark Street is reduced to 5.7 feet. Further, the residence facing Pier Street at the corner of Clark Street and Pier Street has a side yard on Clark Street of only a few feet in depth. In addition, the building position will provide adequate sight lines at that corner. 
I think what we left out there is the reason for reducing the setback is because, you know what I mean, Jenny? The unique proposal. Yes. It's um, and so after is reduced to 5.7 feet due to the uniqueness of this. Based on specific conditions unique to the proposal. Mm -hmm. Based, on Based on specific conditions unique to the proposal. There are no residences on the same block and side of Clark Street that face Clark Street. Sorry, I, um, I'm. There are no yeah. residences on the same block and side of Clark Street that face Clark Street. Period. And then the right, and then that's okay. Further. Mm -hmm. Well, the, okay. the last line I don't I think is, in addition, the building position will provide adequate sight lines at that corner. I think it says it should say, uh, in addition, the building, the plans show that the building position. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I was going to suggest that yeah. the same Mary up in the first paragraph, uh, in the first sentence after Clark Street is reduced to 5.7 base because that, that fluctuates. So it, it, that 5.7 is either, Jenny, um, as measured to the rear, rear left corner of the building or use the same language Mary just proposed, which is as shown on the plans, whatever. As shown on the plans no, is the best. No, no, I don't want it to be as shown on the plans. I oh, want it um, to be- Yeah, the plans, are, the plans are already part of this, the final decision anyway. So I'm, I'm not sure that uh, I'm trying to understand how that and, and, relates. Yeah, and you're right. You can't alter the plans anyway. So I think that's fine, Jim language so i don't i don't know that we need to put that in here because everything is based upon the final plans that are being right. approved for this right. it's 5.7 towards the back corner that's it's great greater as you go towards mass Ave. that's, that's what you told us correct yeah the, yeah. First, the first floor rear corner left corner is 5.7 are we okay with this language board members. Um, the last no. item is the owner shall provide a sidewalk on the east side of the semicircle driveway to the main hotel entrance on Massachusetts Avenue. This was, I think, a sidewalk connection. That, that is the one that Jean had asked about you know, on the left side, on the right side of the front um, driveway. Mm -hmm on the east side and that that it will be installed it will not be ada accessible and mary committed to that in one of her letters yeah you know, jim commit that was one of the improvements jim right i just wanted to clarify that it's go where it was going okay all right um that last one I, you know i think i let me just say this i think jimmy what you're referring to in eight is the post. Is that what, you, what you're concerned about? Correct. All right, because you may recall the plans show that the post on Clark Street is 1.8 feet from uh, the, the lot line, but the building is 5.7 feet. Correct. In the All right, that, that's the distinction he's making. What's, right. the, po what's the post? Um, the, the, the building posts, you, you've seen them on the plans. The oh, plans, okay. So, um, I think he wants to ensure that that's not any confusion. So, sure. so um, I'm trying to understand where that, how that uh, fits into this first sentence. Uh, Rachel, did you wanna? No, I'm, I'm thinking about a way to word that, that refers to the mass of the building. That's why I had, um, suggested if you're going to reference and then reference the plan yeah right yeah. reference the plan mm. or reference that that five seven is from the property line to the back left corner of the foundation well could we just say that it's been reduced and again not include the specific dimension because yeah, that's, that's specific to the yeah. plan i think that would be 
Correct. That, that's actually what I was going to suggest. I think that is what becomes confusing is this, this piece and then how it's measured um, let's, seems let's to take, be it. Yeah, let's take that measurement out. Just is reduced based on specific conditions. Is, is, can we, is that something, can anybody, does well, anybody not like that? that? I guess that's okay. Um, I mean, I, you know. I mean, you, we, he's got to do the construction totally in accordance with the plans that you're going to approve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the last item. Can I add one more, Jennifer? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, there we're going to chamfer the, uh, the planting bed at the corner, Mass Ave and Clark to allow uh, the sidewalk to be uh, wind at that corner where the telephone, where the power pole is and the handicap ramp is. It's a minor thing, but just we want to give a little more space there. So you can actually make that corner. Um, so it's uh, decrease size of planting bed. No, chamfer. 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 To, oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Chamfer the corner of the planting bed. <laughs> sorry, you're going to have to spell for me. I'm not oh. sure I know what you're saying. C H A M F E R. Sorry, C is in Charlie. Yeah. Chamfer the. A plant, the planting bed. Instead of M as in Nancy, it's M as in Mary before the F. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. I, I, couldn't spell, I couldn't spell either. <laughs> okay. right, right into my plan. <laughs> my, my spell check wanted it to be Darfur. Um, the <laughs> chamfer the planting bed at the corner of Mass Ave and Clark Street um, to generate to create additional space on the sidewalk at the corner on the sidewalk oh okay is this seeming like what you were trying to get at i'm close oh, so enough that uh create additional space for the handicap uh, ramp is that what you want to say? No, the ramp is fine. The ramp fits in there. It's just when you turn that corner oh, okay. that space. between the uh, power pole and the corner of the planting, it's, it's okay. not enough space for a uh, handicapped person to turn. You, yeah. you, you want to give them a little more space. Um, Added this. Okay. okay. So I'd like, oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I'm I, sorry. I, I just I, want to read how I amended that. Create additional space for accessibility and maneuvering around plantings and utilities. Okay. Gene? I thought David was going to say something. Oh, I, I was going to uh, ask whether we wanted to add a condition to, um, not sure how to word this, to somehow limit the operator from accepting uh, reservations uh, for guests with cars in excess of the available parking? Or do we cover that already somewhere? We had to come up with a plan if there was going to be. We're going to come up with a plan for you. Is that the TDM plan? No. I thought, I thought that. that that's the off-site parking plan. So if the valet gets full, they have an agreement with other uh, parking areas. To okay. Oh, for park. guest for guest valet parking as well. For overflow guest valet parking. Yes. Okay. I didn't understand. We have that identified clearly. Um, not in. Uh, it says for this is what it says actually. It's number three. Got it. So you um, should just add a line about in, including um, t the TDM plan shall finalize all available offsite parking for employees, tour buses, comma, and overflow guest valet parking. Does that meet, David? 
Yeah, I mean, I think as long as they've got a way to deal with it, that satisfies me. Um, I mean, the, my intention is to uh, prevent guests from from parking on the street because uh, because the valet parking's full. So I, I guess that would address it. Gene, did you have another thought? I, I, my thought is it would say something like the hotel shall not accommodate any guest arriving by car that would result in exceeding the capacity of the rear parking lot. Well, can I can I say this that um, we'll come up with the plan, and the plan may be that that we will tell um, right. prospective guests the parking is full and you cannot utilize a car. I don't think you should foreclose the options of what we may find in the interim for other alternatives. Exactly. I, I would be reluctant to say that they can't that they can't do that. I I think I'm in agreement with Mary and Jim here. I, there are other alternatives that that. Otherwise, they're going to end up with empty rooms. There's, there's can, no, can there's we no say, parking. Can there's we no say, uh, parking right now. You know that. So you can't park the street overnight. Right. And we're not, we're not allowing them to park on Clark Street. So uh, I, I, I don't know where would they park. That's the we, point. We might make uh, we might make an agreement with some other uh, larger lots and park them off site. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I think there are a lot of off-site options that they could look at. I don't want to. This is just requiring that those off-site options be articulated in the TDM. Yeah. yeah. That, that I'm okay with. Well, if, if this means that anybody who arrives with a car when the lot is full, has they have to take the car somewhere else and not that park it on the street. Case then that's okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the responsibility of the valet to take that car to whatever alternate site the, the applicant or the operator has worked out. Okay. David, are you okay with that? I think so. I mean, it, it, it gives, it, it creates a mechanism for dealing with the problem. I guess there's no way we can guarantee that no guest will ever try to park on the street, but this this creates a mechanism for handling overflow. Yeah, I'd like to suggest one. I, I asked this a couple times, but it was never done. And that is the driveway, the little circular, semicircular driveway in Mass Ave. I think there should be no left turns coming out of it. I think it should only be right turns coming out of it or else it's going to be crossing two lines of traffic and going right toward Appleton. I don't I don't know that I agree with that restriction given the volume of traffic and the ability for people coming out of almost any other business on that section of the street to be able to make a left turn. I would agree with Rachel, uh, Jean. Um, I just don't think um, there'll be that much traffic coming out of there. I mean, if you pull in there and you're gonna stay there, you're gonna leave your car there, they're gonna valet it. So it's gonna go right. Um, the only time I can see is when you're leaving. And you know, I don't see that being rush hour traffic. Okay. I don't know. I mean, if it, if it, if it seems like a problem, we can always re revisit it later. I mean, my, my concern would be if someone can only turn right and they need to reverse direction, uh, how are they gonna do that? Though they may go go down Clark through the neighborhood and and come back down on what what's the next street east uh, to come back to Mass Ave? Well they may take a left onto Appleton Place and try to Well yeah, turn. they they're they're any number they're they're all of the options are bad, I think. For, oh. for reversing direction. All right, so I, I'll withdraw that. I'll suggest another one. I think the buses, when they leave there, should not be able to make a ride onto Clark Street and go, go down Clark Street. Uh, 
Because if, if, they, if they can go either way, if they can either make a left or right out of... I think that's already in this, uh, that the, it's prohibited to have a right turn onto Clark Street from that's the rear That's from the parking rear parking lot. lot, I'd like to suggest, and the buses can't do it from the Mass Ave driveway. Are we talking the tour buses? The tour buses. The that, tour buses. That, yeah, that absolutely, that won't happen, but... I'm not opposed if if you want to reduce that to writing. I I, I have no problem with that. They, okay. As long as what we're saying is that they will not be going down clock into the neighborhood. I have no problem. Right. With that. Yeah, that's. I think we should say that. Not going to happen. Uh, tour buses shall not be allowed to turn uh, turn onto Clark Street. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Uh, you might need an operator to ensure. Yeah. Um, the owner, right. the, the owner the shall ensure that tour buses will not be allowed to turn onto Clark Street um, and travel through the neighborhood in order to travel through. Okay. So there was one other item in um, the response to the um, TAC report about the repair of the sidewalk and curb between Mass Ave and the project along the site frontage of Clark Street. Okay. So I think we should put that in as a special condition as well. Um, can you uh, can you read it or create? I'll just read it verbatim from yeah, just for me to yeah. type it. The repair of the sidewalk. Wait, hold on a second before you go any further. I think is that up here elsewhere. I don't remember seeing it. But. Yes, you you covered it. I think in in your first either your first or your second one. Yeah, I thought it was up here. <clears throat> um. Because you and Mary were going back and forth in, in terms of getting the clarity that it was going to do the entire um, sidewalk on clock in Mass Ave, but we were not doing the other side of Mass Ave. That's right here. The owner is responsible for repairing the sidewalk. Okay, all right. I, I, was, I just thought there was something else. The curb, not the actual. <clears throat> okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, so this is this is covering it, right? Yep. Okay. Sorry, it was starting to sound familiar. My fault. Is is the other uh, condition that was agreed to for uh, confirming the driveway slopes for compliance with the ADA, is that adequately covered by the ADA condition? I said yeah. um, all, you know, the program and building components and all outdoor areas, including parking. Yeah, I think that's fine. Do we want to say, do we want to say something about the trucks using the, um, Rear, the rear parking lot shall not exceed 18 feet in length. Of course, that was what we asked them for. What was the maximum? How would the, how would the garbage trucks work then, Gene? Well, well, that's what the, the garbage trucks are less because we specifically asked them what's the maximum length of truck that could use that driveway and then turn safely onto Clark Street, and he said 38 Sorry, feet. I don't know that. If you have a minute, I can- 38, 38 feet, Gene, I think you, you mentioned 18 in your initial con comment. No, no, 38, 38. So oh. I could just say servi service trucks using the rear parking area shall not exceed eight, 38 feet in length. That's fine, Gene. I thought you said 18 the first time. I, if I did, that was my mistake. It's getting too late for me. So it just says service trucks using the where, rear. Where park. are you? Where, which which number are we on? I'm sorry. You could uh, do a, a new number in special conditions. Um, yeah, I just I, it feels like it ties to one of these other ones. So I'm just wondering if it's an add-on. If it's not, then I'll I'll happily create another. That's fine. I'm not sure. Okay. There, were, I mean, there was something in there that talked they could use the front and the rear. I just forget where it was. Uh, was the hours of delivery and stuff too? Yeah, that's that's what I was getting at. Um, yeah. Oh, number five, number five. 
this one. That's about right? trash, but that's about just about trash. This is any service truck. Well, um, that's right here. Right Limit here. deliveries to the site between 8.30 and 2 p.m. and shall require that the delivery vehicles accessing the site can utilize the front or rear driveways for loading and unloading. Airport. Okay. Yeah, you know, we can just add a sentence that says service trucks using the rear parking area. Service. Shall not service trucks using the rear parking area shall not exceed 38 feet in length. And you include service trucks to mean trash removal, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, we could be more specific and say trash removal and delivery trucks accessing the rear parking area. If you say service and trash removal. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. And I'd say accessing, not using. Right. So what's not in here, I think, is the reduction from 50 to 48 units. That would go in the in the early part, the, the sort of upfront uh, overall decision. So I would make that clear. Okay, great. Um, yeah, the, the, the number of beds. Okay. There's a, there have been other changes as well. So that, that's basically the edit to the, the overall memo that I will absolutely make sure to do. So just to be clear, uh, we're reducing the number of units to 48 and shifting the outdoor space on the roof to the Clark Street side? Clark Street corner, yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood. And the uh, public access space will be reduced as well? Correct. What will it be reduced to? Jim? I didn't think it was going to be reduced. That's why I'm asking. What what was going to be reduced? I I, I apologize for your question. The public access space. It's going yeah, to be the, the public access space, right? Per per the discussion we had with Ken, it would come down because we're dropping. I estimated about 700 square feet between the loss of the two units there. So if it's 600 square feet, then it would be the corresponding drop. In other words, um, the 210 that I was required to do for the um, 2100 square feet, we agreed was going to contract based on the reduction in the area. So what's it going to be? What's the square footage of the space going to be then? Um, I don't, I don't, what I'm saying is I don't have the math. If it were, if it's like 700 square feet, um, then that, that is uh, substantially smaller than the 2,100 square feet. I think, I think, Jenny, you probably just need to work that out with them before the decision goes out. It's going to be some number between 210 and 675. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's going to be closer to 675 than 210. No, I don't think so. I do. Absolutely not. Just so, just so it's it's clear. Okay, the 675 did not have anything to do. With right, right. You anything. gave some extra space. A right. Tremendous amount. Four four hundred and and sixty five uh, square feet extra. Mm -hmm. Right. Four. So. What, what I'm suggesting is just the opposite. We're not, we're not doing these to have a second vote later because we're not in agreement. We've taken a lot of time here. So let's be honest with each other. It is going to be much closer to the 200 than the 600. Absolutely. And we are not going to be able to do, and, and you can play the tape later. I'm not backtracking. I've been consistent. And this is why Ken and I spent a lot of time on this twice. We're not going to be able to 
do all the hosting, Gene, that you and I spoke about up front. I, and I, I agree with you. That's what we said. Correct. I think reducing the mass and having a garden up there was well worth the trade-off of that space there. Right. We just, Jim, you just need to give, um, or Jim or Mary, Jenny, what the number is going to be. Okay. No problem. We'll do. Oh, right now? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, there was a lull, so I thought that's who you were waiting no, on no. us. No, we're just all trying to stay awake. Uh, is that anything else? I don't have anything else. I do not. Jim, anything else? No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm very appreciative of all your time. Andrew? Gene, Gene, did that cover everything that was on the list you said you had? I think so. Some of the things were subsumed into like number one of the general conditions. I had some stuff about lighting, but that's in one of these. So, yeah. I put that in the exterior. I just put that as part of this exterior lighting. Right, right. Number right. one covers a lot. Right. One and had a couple of the others in it. Andrew, yeah. you there? They were consolidated. Yep. It sounds like we're all in agreement here. <clears throat> so I uh, will close the public hearing on uh, this matter at docket number 3602. And we may move to a vote, unless there are any other comments. I uh, will so motion as, uh, as all the conditions we spoke of and we agree, agree to. Second. Okay, we'll run down the list. Ken. Aye. Rachel. Aye. David. Aye. Jean. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you all for your uh, hard work on this. I'm excited thank you all you. very much. We I'll appreciate it. And, and Mary, thank you for thank you. Your, the long work you've all put in. It's thank good, you. Good thank work. you. Uh, uh, Andrew, I'm going to stay on if you're going to discuss 1165 R Mass Ave, if you have any questions. Uh, okay. Um, okay. But I'm on the Carol another, and We do Simmons. have another public hearing that we need to handle. Sure. sure. Um, but then we'll move to that okay. item. So, all right. So, 30, docket 3602 is closed, uh, and we are moving on to. Thank you all. Thank you. Jenny, can you give me the number? I seem to have closed out of my, my file here by accident. To move, move desks. It's, it's uh, 3631. 30, 30, <laughs> I have it. All right, so moving on to docket number 3631473, Mass Ave. Uh, this is a special permit to review an application uh, related to Acetrone at uh, 473 Mass Ave by Go To Hool. I apologize, I probably butchered your name completely. That's uh, perfect. Can you your... hear me, guys? Yes. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for your patience. Thank you, thank you. It's been about three hours, but that's fine, yeah. you know. We've been right here with you. But uh, I just found out there's a new hotel going into town. That's great. <laughs> 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 I didn't know about that. So anyway, my name is Gotu Hule. I run Asitron. And um, when I first opened it, we just put a big banner up there with a, the biggest uh, name and so everybody to see, which has basically faded over the years. And uh, for the last four years, every time I drive by, I look at the sign and I'm like, you know what, I need to change this. Uh, it was orange when it started, it's white now. So. Uh, I definitely want to change this. And listen, just sitting at home all this time for the last like four or five months, and looking at the walls and painting and this, I'm thinking about like improving and giving it a new look. So, you know, we painted inside of the floors and everything. And I think this is the last thing that I want to do is, you know, that curb appeal. Uh, want to get a nice little sign out there. I did not need a permit when I did this. And what I'm going for is like much smaller actually. So I don't know what, you know, why I needed to do this. But anyway, we'll go through the process. So what we're doing is we're basically going with a half sign and like a little awning at the bottom of it, you know. The, the bottom line is I, I just wanted to look nice and a little elegant. I don't think these, these drawings that you're seeing here does perfect justice 
because the materials that I've chosen, you know, it looks like way, way more elegant. You know, something that I saw in Oaxaca in Mexico when I was there, and it looks so pretty and so authentic. The bottom line is I want it to look good. You know, I want the center to look good. It looks pretty dead these days. And just bring some life back over here, you know. Um, so I don't know about this special permit that I need. So I went with a local guy, Falcon Signs, give the business to a local guy. And uh, he told me that, hey, listen, you know, we need to do this, uh, this special thing. And here we are, you know. So uh, I really want to change this faded banner that we have up there and go with something a little more like backlit, a little more subtle, a little more elegant, but also keeping in, in, in theme with, uh, with Mexico, you know, the little swirls on the sides and everything, you know? Um, so that's the plan, guys. Um, let me know, what can we do? Uh, the, the whole project is basically on hold right now. Uh, this depends on your approval, I think. If you guys say, okay, we can go ahead and, and make that new sign. But basically overall, it's gonna be much smaller. I think when we first opened, we just went with the biggest thing and, you know, and, and that's what happened. Uh, the colors are a little off here. You know, don't, don't take this color for its exact kind of uh, value. A little, it's a little off. I don't think these drawings are the perfect thing, but that's a general idea. So, uh, what is this? Okay. All right. So we'll take. Uh, we'll turn to the board for questions and comments. I'll start with uh, Rachel. Go ahead. Are you with me all the time tonight, Andrew? Um, <laughs> uh, so no I, I, I appreciate that you're. Um, that you're changing up the sign. You're, you're right. I think it is just about the largest sign in Arlington Center. Right, right. right. And now. which we didn't, we didn't need a permit for. I don't know why. Now I'm going down. And I, say, I understand. Well, we've been trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, the signage is of, of the highest quality. And I appreciate again that, that you're looking at doing something um, high Better. quality and, and, and improving what you have there and, and um, yeah. the investment that you're making in your business. So thank you. Um, I think that um, my, so I, w I went and I took a look at the, at the building facade a, a bit today. Um, it, so the current proposal is, is actually larger than what's allowed in the current signage bylaws, which is a maximum of um, 40 square feet. Um, but what's, what's interesting, and, and again, what I couldn't tell because the entire signage panel um, the signage band is is covered by the the awning that's currently there is really right. what the condition is behind there so i couldn't tell there's kind of a gray band and jenny i'm not sure if you can pull the photo up of the existing um conditions there's kind of a gray band that runs across and i couldn't tell if that was actually the sign band um but if you look at your neighbor to the left of what we're looking at right here it Right. looks like on their facade there's just kind of a, um, a, a either a stucco or a or a stone facade right. so i'm not sure what condition it is behind there um you know right. i'm i'm inclined to require that the sign be the 40 square feet which would mean because it's a sign pan that you would need to pull the entire thing in from from the edges but i i quite frankly think that that would um not be as aesthetically appealing as what you have here, given exactly, the yeah. awning below. So yeah. I'm a little so bit can conflicted I explain right that? now. I'm a little bit conflicted, so I'd like to hear the opinion of my of my colleagues. Can I explain that quickly? Sure. Why are we doing that? Yeah. So what's happening is, if you look at the building itself, right? There's some really messed up concrete that's kind of like you know peeling off, and you know it's an, it's an older building, you know. So um, what we need to do is we just kind of need to like put a background to, to, you know, to cover that concrete, you know, if we leave any edges on the side, you know, it's that concrete will show, you know, and 
you know, and we, if we bring the sign in a little bit, I'm talking about the edges, it's, it, it becomes even more prominent than concrete, you know. Right. That was my so, assumption. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do is just cover that concrete with the background, but make the letters smaller. So, you know, the elegance is in that, in that lettering, which is the focus. You know, no one's you know, going to see what the background is. The background kind of like, you know, it's in the darkness, you know, there's no lights on it. The lights will be behind the letters. So the focus will be on the letters, which is much, much smaller if you, in proportion to that sign, you know? So when you talk about the actual square footage, you, you know, we have to go with the, with the edges. But if you bring those edges smaller, I mean, closer, that, that horrible concrete, shows up and you know that that concrete becomes even more prominent you know so we just that back thing is just to cover it but the lettering is much smaller so the uh, the focus is on the lettering and then of course a little awning in the front you know for the sun because we, we get hit by the sun all the time you know right. and that's all and we put those little twirls in the end just to like give it some kind of you know some kind of a little look you know but but that's about it you know bottom line is we want you know we're a restaurant you know, the curb appeal is like probably the most important thing for us. You know, we want it to look nice and not bad. You know, so if it look if it looks bad, promise me I'll just take the whole thing down. You know, so that's that's uh, so that that's what that whole thing is. You know, what about what about moving the curls in tight to the uh, to the letter the, to kind of. Right. Yeah, that's that. that that's, 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 the visual, the visual uh, impact of the sign even more without uncovering the ugly concrete underneath. Yeah, you know what, David? That's that's a pretty good idea. We can bring those twirls in, you know. But the reason why we went with this is that's the logo of the restaurant. So any way you look at it, you know, on paper or on the internet, you know, that that was the logo. But if, we, if you want us to bring the twirls in, you can bring it in closer to the to the lettering, you know. But the background, ladies and gentlemen, you know, um, if you can allow me to do that, I just want to cover that concrete at the back, you know. Uh, it just doesn't look good, you know. Um, but let's leave the focus on the lettering, you know, because that's what people people are going to see. So um, we're not going to do, we're not going to go with the goose, you know, those goose neck lights. The, the, these are going to be backlit letters. So, so you'll be uh, removing the existing gooseneck lighting then? Yeah, yeah, okay, the gooseneck mess. Yeah, you know, that'll go, you know. So if, if you can imagine that, you know, the gooseneck lighting is kind of brightens the whole thing in the front. So that'll go away. And uh, the focus will be on just the lettering, which is like much narrower compared to, compared to the left one, you know, the before one, which is like humongous, you know. So uh, I don't even know who designed that like nine years ago, honestly. Can I just interrupt for a minute? I, I just want to keep, yes, this, sir. I want to keep this going, okay? And it's, uh, I'm in agreement with Rachel. That's a big ass sign you got there, okay? Right. And um, I like to see what's behind that thing there to understand better okay. what, what we're hiding, okay? Because I, I believe um, the top portion of that sign is, is hiding a lead coated copper that's, but that's been patinaed for a while. Right. I'm not sure what kind of shape it's in. Right. So uh, I, I would like to say, if you want us to approve yeah. something today, I'm mm -hmm. going to say no. But if you want to uh, wait till uh, to our next meeting, yeah. I have no problem going out there and looking at it to see what the, what the background is. And what okay, that's fine. Mind. You can okay. do that. But when you come here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, slow, oh, slow down for a minute. Slow down. Let, let us speak first, and then you can come back, okay? Oh, sure, go ahead. Okay. I'm I'm talking to my other board members. I'm not talking to you right now, okay? Oh, okay, okay. I, I agree with Ken completely. Okay. I agree with Ken as well. I think that's a good point. I'm, I'm looking at the, the site on uh, Google Street View, and there may be some benefit to showing the, the this building, which is really a pretty interesting looking building that ought to have attention drawn to it. You know? And, and it, it seems to me the only way we can approve the larger sign as if it's in the public interest and we won't know if it is until we see sure. what it's behind it and what it would look like. So right. I agree with Ken. Okay. 
And so, Ken volunteered to go out and look at it too. I was very yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, I thought, I thought you were going to get. So, Mr. Ken, if we, when we, what I was trying to say is when you come here, and if you look at our neighbor signs versus Punjab, right? Yep. They've got that. They've got that same uh, building background, which they've covered like all the way across. You know, okay. and the reason the reason why they put that background all mm -hmm. the way across, which is like twice as us, is because of that. You know, that ugly building behind. That's okay, let, let let us take a look at it and see what's truly what behind it here, because. Sure. Uh, um, you know, um, I really think I, I see that all the time. I'm, you know, I get my hair cut down in the square there, uh, and right. uh, that is one big sign you got there. Okay. Oh, this one is big, but the yes. one, the new one that will go won't be that big. Well, the awning is still the same. It, I consider the whole awning the sign. The uh, awning will be half the size, like half of what we have right now. So the top part is like a like a metal background, and then like the whole thing is like seven feet. So the top part is about just by the where the ladder goes is about two and a half feet, I think. And then the awning is only four feet coming down. So right now we have seven feet top to down. So the awning will be only half of that because the top part of that will be uh, just backlit letters with, you know. Okay. Uh, I, I am totally confused now, okay? Because right. when I thought uh, your new after photograph, okay, that you have there right. is – just the same awning frame. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. So it's you're not. saying that you're saying that the light orange or that yellowish is actually right. a sign that's backlit. Yes. That's, that's a box that's backlit. That's a box, yeah. It's and box. then below that box, that's then that's your awning. It's a three three and a half feet awning, yeah. That's all. So it's okay. half and half. I think if you if your sign guy included a section of that, that would have helped a lot much. because uh, right. when I look at that right now, I don't see that. I just see it right. as you just put a new cover over your frame. No, 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 no. That's not how it's going. That's well, not how it's I, going. I can't tell. Right, right. Uh, maybe the drawing's a little, you know, it's confusing okay. for me too. But what we're doing is like a three and a half feet box on top, right? With the backlit letters. And then at the end of that box at the bottom, there's like another three and a half feet on it. So it's basically the awning is only three and a half feet. It's not as big as this. This is crazy. This is so. What, so what's the square footage of the box? Oh, the box is probably like it's twenty-five. 66. I think sixty-six square feet. It's in Jenny's memo. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it's, sorry, it's, okay. it's sixty-six because it's it's uh, three feet by twenty-two feet. It's still too big. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm down to forty. <clears throat> or else you're you're way out of compliance. But that's why you're gonna look uh, at it, Ken. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. <laughs> let's let's uh, let's continue this. And uh, Ken, you can go pick up dinner and take a look at it sometime this week. And uh, I don't want. Okay, I'll look at it. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Please come back. I think the other thing too, you know, Ken will take a, a look at it. I, I took a look at it a little bit again. I'll take a, another closer look. But if you can have your signage um, guy also cut a section through the sign so that we know what the, you know, again, what the construction of the box is, that would be really helpful. Okay. All right. I, don't, I don't know what he's doing to the box. So I think it's something yeah, that would, it would be helpful for us to know the depth of the box. You know, is it is it truly a, a box, you know, or I'm how is he mounting the letters, those types of things. It's uh, I think front to back the box is I think about three inches, or maybe like two inches. Just to have the have just like have right it, to you it. Have it. Have put it right. You'll know what to do. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. In fact, I think I see them on tonight, so they can uh, they can interpret what we're asking. Uh, so uh, I'm going to motion uh, to continue. Second. It's to uh, September 14th. Sorry. Okay. Uh, continue continue this, uh, to September 14th. Second. Okay. Ken. Aye. Jean. Yes. Rachel. Yes. David. Yes. I vote yes. All right. So that hearing is continued to September 14th. We'll see you then. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Have Thank a good you. night. All Thank right. you. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. All right. So uh, we're going to move on to the Myrac property and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny to walk us through what we're looking at here uh, and what we're being asked to do as far as providing comments. 
Uh, one minute. Let me just. A lot of things here. Um, all right. So, um, so what you are, what the, this is actually open. Uh, you don't have to do this. The uh, select board provides a comment letter uh, to Mass Housing, which is something that they're asked to do by Mass Housing when an applicant files a comprehensive permit um, for a project eligibility letter. And as part of that process, they ask the local community for comments um, or support or both. Um, so that's what the select board was discussing this evening as well. Um, I've learned that they've uh, planned to continue that conversation. So they didn't finalize anything in, uh, just yet. Um, but they've also asked if other boards or commissions would want to weigh in. So that I figured I would ask this board if you wanted to weigh in um, and provide any sort of very preliminary comments on what you have looked at that was filed with this agenda. Or if you also happen to tune in to uh, when the applicant made a presentation to the select board earlier this summer, um, last month actually, uh, about sort of the, the, the mechanics of the application and um, their proposal. So, uh, so the question is really, it's kind of on the table as to, we didn't really talk about it a lot, but at the last meeting, but if you want to make comments, we can make those comments in a letter and I would, uh, you know, we'll submit it with the town's overall comments to Mass Housing. Um, and they could cover any number of things. It could be very basic, like we, uh, you know, we are interested in learning more as this proposal develops. Um, we are very interested in greater affordability. We are I'm sort of picking things, but um, it could be also some concerns that you might have that you just want to express in writing. Um, but you're not required to do this. It's not an application that will come to this board at any point in time for review because it is a ZBA permit. Um, so this is really just uh, up to you. I think David and then Jean. So is there, I, I'm not familiar with the project except very broadly. Is there any commercial component to it? There's no commercial component. No, it's all housing. The so only commercial that's on that site is work bar, which is existing. Yeah, right. And, and that's not not part of the project. So I, I guess, you know, thinking about, you know, the economic analysis of the industrial zones that, that we've been doing, yep. I, I would say I'm deeply disappointed to lose uh, more, uh, more property where commercial development could happen. I agree with that. That was the exact point I was going to make. Okay. Yeah, I think that seems I think I think our goal of <clears throat> expanding housing affordability is important. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that this this is concerns me as, as too much of a removal of existing commercial space where some uh, valuable commercial use could go in without a lot of effort. I agree with you. Um, this is just um, a lack of balanced development that we're doing here right now. I know we're not, we don't have any say in it, but this is 40B housing and I think we need it. I, I applaud having more ho affordable housing, but we're losing this, uh, this space here. And I was wondering why can't we attract some commercial, commercial people in there? Is it, is it because of um, the lack of transportation, the lack of parking, or uh, the, difficulty, the difficulty of getting stuff permitted? Mm -hmm. We should all ask ourselves that as we go through this and say, hey, what happened? We lost this space. We lost this opportunity. You know. Could I, Andrew, if you mind, I represent the Myrick, Mary O'Connor, I represent the Myrak family in Spalding and Sly in connection with this development. The Myraks have owned this property for nearly a hundred years. And um, recently um, they've uh, put over $2 million into redoing work bar. I'm sure you've all seen um, that project. They will ultimately own this 40B when it is completed. They will buy out the joint venture. They did look at highest and best use of developing this area and the highest and best use was this type of development. 
There's an incredible amount of infrastructure that needs to be done. The building needs to be re uh, rebuilt. Uh, it's going to be a very costly project to build. And uh, they did do an analysis of that. I, I understand the board's concerns, but they did spend the money to, they view it somewhat as a mixed use because they'll have work bar on that site as well, along with the housing. So it's kind of a living and working environment um, that they're uh, proposing. Uh, Mary, I, I, um, this has come from me. I am not blaming the, the Marek folks. I'm just stating the fact that what this community is happening right now and what, what, what we're trying to do and, and move forward with development in, in the city, and I say in this town, sorry, I'm getting a little tired from being so late. And the, the missed opportunity we, we had that we didn't take advantage of or we didn't, we didn't enable the landowner to do uh, more with it than just plain affordable housing, which is not bad either, but I don't mm -hmm. know. Certainly. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I would echo that. <clears throat> I don't think it's a bad project. I just, um, I think it's a shame to lose more commercial space in town, but. Yeah, I, I think it would be a good project for somewhere else in town. I'm just with my colleagues, I'm disappointed that it would be in the industrial zone as opposed to, you know, other places. Um, I'm wondering What's the possibility of, you know, having that building also be mixed use in some sort of way or have live work spaces, something like that, so we don't lose all of the commercial aspect of that building? That was a question, Mary. I, I, I can't respond to that. You know, I, I think that my client and the, uh, the joint venture uh, partners, Balding and Sly, looked at it and it was an economic decision. And, and, you, well, and you all know that the Myrax have a considerable amount of commercial property in this town and they have been very good stewards. They keep their properties up um, and they have been very uh, philanthropic and generous to this town. So they take their role um, in this town very seriously. Uh, and they are probably one of the biggest commercial property owners in town. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any doubt about that. I know they've been very good. I, I know that all of what you say is true. And I, and I don't think any of our problem is with them. It certainly isn't mine. It's just uh, circumstances being what they are. And I think the, the board, this board and, and its subcommittees ought to continue on with uh, economic analysis, analyses of uh, <clears throat> the larger industrial and commercial zones that, that remain uh, to be sure that they're being used to their highest and best value. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that <clears throat> outreach is done to property owners and, and other developers to make sure that uh, we don't continue to lose that, that tiny sliver of tax base that exists. If, if I could just add to that, I, you know, in the, in the letter and, and the proposal that, that we were given, um, you know, it made mention to amenity spaces for the, the new housing development. And, you know, to echo what my colleague said, it would, it would just be great to see that as, um, that looked at that amenity space as potential commercial property that could serve not only the, the new housing that's being created, but the community at at large, given especially that work bar is already there and attracting so many people to the site um, oh, already from the town. I'll pass those comments along. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else on this agenda item? Um, so I, so just for the uh, sake of the board and your, I'm going to draft a comment letter, um, which I can you know, circulate and share, and you can just provide me with comments individually um, so that I can finalize it. Or this is due on September 7th, by the way. So the, the or would be that we choose another meeting date between now and then to finalize something. It is getting late, um, just respectfully, but also uh, we still have one more agenda item, technically. Um, so I, uh, I'm sure there are other things that we could include in this letter as well. So you might want to have the benefit of looking at something a little bit more thoroughly when you have a fresh mind. Um, alternatively, I can just take everything that you stated, which is primarily about 
you're, um, you know, it, it certainly helps to achieve a goal of expanding affordable housing. It's needed, you know, and you applaud it, but the, the primary concerns of this board relate to the commercial space. And if there's any way to either incorporate that or um, focus on the public amenity spaces as being an opportunity, that that would be uh, the request of the board. I mean, I can, I, I think given the amount of information we have at this time, that might be one way of approaching this. And then, you, you know, you'll be happy to weigh in at other points during the process. So uh, what would, is there what would you desire meeting? which path? Is there another meeting between now and September 7th? No, not for no. this board, no. Yeah. Uh, so you'd have to schedule another meeting. And this letter just goes to Mass Housing, right? A copy to the select board? It's just to the, I'm just, uh, it's just to the select board actually. Oh, just to the select, the select board. board. The select board is, it's collecting the comments and it'll go with their letter. Oh. Um, so the conservation commission already created a letter which will so go I, in, the, in the same package. Yeah, so I think we should do something along the lines that you just mentioned, which is basically what we all just said. Yeah, okay. I, thought I know that there's, really there well. is at least one person who wishes to say something, but I thought we could maybe finalize this first before we get there. Well, do we, do we also want to say anything about transportation issues and in particular, uh, making sure that they're encouraging um, uh, biking, walking, and, and transit? Because I, I did look at the niche engineering traffic analysis that, uh, well, I was a little confused by it because it indicated that uh, over the next five years, uh, there'll be significant negative impacts at, uh, at some of the intersections there, but then said it wouldn't be because of this project. Um, so, yeah. if, uh, so uh, I mean, that's also a way of saying this: uh, things are going to get worse, and this project is going to pile on to that for potentially. So, I don't know if we wanted to just flag the transportation issues at all. Well, won't we have more opportunity to comment when we get to see more of the project than this sort of? I, I'm not sure whether this is the appropriate. Time. There, I'm sure there will be another point to weigh in during the actual hearing process, like similar to what is happening with the Thorndike Place uh, development. So yes, the board and other boards and commissions are likely afforded that same opportunity in departments as well for town. So um, I, I'm happy to just make that clear that that's a priority of this board for it to be, that it should be paid attention to. I'm not sure what I'm specifically, what you're specifically requesting, David, but could it just be a statement about, you know, generally speaking, we, we want to ensure that it encourages a range of uh, transportation options for now? Yeah, unless we want to go so far to say that we are concerned about potential transportation impacts of a project that size at that location. We would ask them to, um, there's a lot of continuation of these issues, so I'm not sure that they won't be thinking about that in relationship to lots of other things that are happening. There's also the connection to the bikeway, which is important. Absolutely. There's many things that I could enumerate here, but I want to try to just hear what your ideas are. Um, I, I don't have any specific ideas um, other than the connection to the bikeway and a general concern about uh, exacerbating um, traffic issues that are already projected to get worse in that area, according to their own engineering studies. So, um, you know, I, I think as you said, when it gets to the design phase, we'd mm -hmm. have more opportunity to make more specific comments when we have an idea of what they're proposing. Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking, um, along the lines of the more detailed comments on, on the other 40B project. Yeah, and we'll have, there will be another, you know, the same sort of added uh, third party review of plans and the same, so we'll have additional information to review as well. There okay. is a traffic report that was posted as well um, that I shared, but I think, you know, more detail is needed. Hey, Jenny. Uh, yes. Once we get this, if, if this 40B happens in Arlington, mm -hmm. is there a three year or four year moratorium uh, for another one? No. Or we, since we still don't make the criteria, 
No. You can keep it the happening. Town, the, the town could go back to the 1.5%, but not, not under, not as a, not in relationship to the number of 40 Bs. I see. So we're still at jeopardy for other industrial zone areas for this happening. I mean, um, I suppose for any place, technically, because yep. it, it's not about a particular area of town. Okay. I'm just wanting, you know. Yeah. Okay. I think that I think the conversation about commercial is is something that's important to capture. And that seemed to be the primary concern for all of all of you. So. Yes. So I will, I'll draft something um, and Andrew, I'll, I'll hand it back to you and I'll send it around. Sorry, I didn't finish that. All right. Um, that's it, Mr. Holman. I'll allow you to make your point during open forum since we're moving into that. Um, go right ahead, you can speak first. You need to unmute You're yourself. Muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Aaron Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. I wanted to respond to your discussion just now. Three points. I'll try to be very quick. Uh, I moved to Arlington. The weekend I moved to Arlington was the weekend that MIRAC announced uh, the legacy project publicly. I have heard the, we can't find commercial, we need to do housing before, so I heard it a little over 20 years ago. I think you can count on the Myrax, as well as being good stewards, to do what is most profitable. Count on that. Uh, second, uh, regarding the question about 40B, no, there is nothing to prevent another developer from immediately applying to build another 40B project on somewhere on that same site. Uh, you might call this the camel sticking its nose in the tent, where the camel is more housing development, uh, gobbling up the tent of industrial area. You are absolutely right to be worried about it. And if you are concerned about the planning future of Arlington, yes, you should be very concerned uh, about that. In terms of your letter that you have the option of drafting to mass housing, I think that should be an expression of concern that you should include. I hope you will include it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don Seltzer, go ahead. Hi, uh, I thought Steve Revelak had his hand up first, if you wanted to speak first, it doesn't matter to I me. I called on you first. Okay, thank you. I just have a quick question. Earlier this evening, you deferred a number of decisions and issues to the building inspector. Could you be specific as to who you mean by that? It's the Inspectional Services Department. Um, yeah, but by building inspector, could you be specific as the individual? Ask your question. The reason, the, the reason ask I asked that- Ask your question stop this. I don't know. What? Ask your the question. Reason, Okay, um, the, my point is this. Um, early in this process, the head of inspectional services recused himself from some of the decisions because of his uh, personal connection to the developer. Uh, is he going to be playing an active role in deciding on these? You have issues? to ask him. If he's recused himself, he's recused himself. You have to ask him, and he is not on this. He's not in this meeting. That's a matter of real concern. Take it up with him. Okay, thank you. Can't answer that question for you. Can Jenny? Nope. Mr. Byrne can, can or his help? assistant can? Asked and answered. Steve, go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. I just, um, after hearing your discussion, I just want to make a few brief remarks about commercial space. The first thing I'd like to point out that is, is that of Arlington's zoned acreage, approximately five, slightly over 5.6% is zoned business or industrial. So in, this, is, this is a small portion of town where commercial uses are allowed. 
Now, I re so as if you consider the zoning map as a matter of policy, you know, as, or the zoning map is a policy statement, we are not a job center. You know, that's, that's what the map says. You know, there is a very small sliver of town where one can own a business. We're not a job center. It's basically to provide for amenities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll note that if one were to completely eliminate commercial zoning, you know, all commercial uses from town, which I mean, we'll, it'll never happen. We're always going to have a, a drug store and a supermarket and at least a couple of sh restaurants. But that would be a, a residential tax increase of about 6%. And I should note that this is less than the debt exclusion we just passed for the overall, you know, for the, for the new high school. So, I mean, our commercial tax base is effectively rounding error. I understand and appreciate the desire to have a larger commercial tax base, but this really boils down to dollars and square feet. So that either means putting um, more intensive development on the existing sites or finding ways to take uh, sites where commercial development is not allowed and allowing it. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of ways you could approach this. There are pockets in, in Arlington and in Cambridge and in Somerville where there's just like, you know, a couple little businesses tucked away in the middle of a residential neighborhood. That's one way to go. But, um, you know, if one is, if the board is, would really like to, you know, increase, is interested in seeing more business, more commercial development, um, we have to, I, I just suggest that we need to accommodate the land for that. So thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right. Does anyone else wish to speak this evening? No? All right. Good night. Thank make you. Oh, yeah, me. Um, <laughs> I do want to see uh, Andrew. I do want to say uh, on behalf of me and the board, we really like to appreciate your, your time that you spent on the board. Uh, and um, yeah. you know, and uh, I think sometime after this pandemic, we would love to uh, take you off for a drink. We can have a socially distanced uh, <laughs> yeah, cocktail at some point in the future. Yes. I would enjoy yeah. that. Right. I right. will. Uh, I will miss those of you on the board. I will miss you, Jenny and Aaron, and thank you for uh, all your hard work. Uh, I'll reach out to each of you individually when I am uh, not so tired. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure to serve with all of you and everybody else that's been a part of the board over my <clears throat> tenure. Um, I had remarks prepared, but I don't want to read that <laughs> right now. <laughs> so um, it's bittersweet. I will miss you all. Um, it's been fun. And uh, good night. Thank you. Thank you. We'll miss you, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Let somebody make a motion. Bye. Oh, motion. Sure. Second. Who made the yeah, motion? I did. Dean made the motion. No, David, David made the motion. David made the motion. Ken seconded. All right, Rachel. Yes. David. Yes. Ken. Yes. Dean. Yes. All right, and I vote yes. Good night. Thank you. It's been <laughs> Thank fun. you. Thanks, Andrew. Bye. 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 <laughs>